<laughs> All right, we back. My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world, 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 <laughs> I fucking knew it, man. <laughs> See, you fucked up too. You was you was supposed to do that. That you know what I mean? we're gonna talk about that. Hey, I was supposed to. Hey, you know what I mean? I, it's, it's no, you I, got a remix. No, no, no. Talking about it's when I get the bat signal. When I get the bat signal, like the bat. when I get that, oh. I know. Okay. Oh, that, oh that's so, what you was looking for. Yeah, I always wait for the bat. Hit signal. that like, hit that shit. Let everybody know you in here. Don't cost you no paper unless you're a motherfucking hater. Hater, 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 hater. hater, hater get him, champ. What's the hater though? The hater is usually a big show. <laughs> <laughs> it's just faintly. They don't deserve the full it's impact it's it's of, it's of haters. Keep the light on haters today. Yeah, okay, I like light on haters. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Quadru. Mac, how, how you been, Mac? I don't know. I, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. You got a dope-ass hoodie on. Oh, yeah, always. That's, that, that's, that's, that's not new. What does it say? It says, you are enough, and just for the record. Dear person behind me, the world is a better place with you in it. Love you, the person in front of you. Yeah. Yo, I like that. Yo. I like that. Make me wear some fly like shit, that, man. Where you get it from? You know what? You know, and I want to say shout out to the fans. Because, yeah, the show was nothing without y'all. So That's thank you for continuously tuning in. Thank you for continuously hitting the like, continuously mm-hmm. hitting the share, continuously having arguments in the comment section. I read them. Even though sometimes I don't comment, I read them. And, and, I, and I'm always, like, I always have a good feeling of, of this is great. We have, like, a, we've cultivated a community of people who love hip-hop mm-hmm. on this mm-hmm. channel. So thank you. Thank yes. you. Salute Thank to you, you all. For oh, whoa, whoa. Speaking of comments, folks, if you're beefing about, first of all, congratulations to everybody who got nominated to BET. Yes. All, all the platforms. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 No hate here. No we, hate. We're we, we not, not sour. There's right. none of that. But if you want to complain about the fact that your favorite show, My Expert Opinion, was not nominated, do that to BET. At them. Tell them. Like, let, let them hear the voice of the people. We can only do but so much. We can do what we do here. Right. But we weren't involved in the nominations. If you want to send a signal and let them know that you're unhappy with their selection, talk to BET. Yeah, talk to BET. Uh, any, uh, and any other platform that might be given a, out a podcast award that you feel like we should be a part of, voice your opinion. Say mm-hmm. something. They're listening. Yeah. The same way we listen to y'all, they listen to y'all. Say something. Right. There's almost a million of y'all, so... Matter of fact, we're going to change the intro music for this episode. That's how much we've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Gat, what's My the word? Brother. We here. We here. That's it. Champ. Everything's well. Everything's good. Happy to be home. Happy to be free around great people. Um, I do have to shout out my man, Handsome Rel. Uh, it's my brother. Love you. Um, he dropped a, a, a single called Who Do You Love over the LL Cool J Lounge and Beat. Mm-hmm. Just spiced up. It's fire. Really love the song. It's a summer record, even though it dropped toward the end. But uh, make sure y'all go out there and check it out. It's fire. Dope. Dope. Speaking of which, will Round and Round be done by the time this is? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we got a song out, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's called Round and Round, featuring Brooklyn Hands, produced by, produced by my man, Do. Mm-hmm. Um, check it out. Check it out. We're going to, you know probably spice splice the whole video throughout this whole episode like shameless promo it's gonna be great <laughs> shot by jk47 tonight we have an originator the originator in the building now there's a lot of history with brooklyn in this hip-hop thing i know you know mech is a hip-hop historian Queens. And you know, I'm a hip hop lover first and you, foremost. You let let him tell it. Queens, you know, Queens created this whole thing, and, Never and tell then <laughs> why <laughs> are you doing that? 
but there were there were a lot of voices coming out of Brooklyn who have um cultivated the scene and and also helped to 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 create new artists some of the artists that I mean Jay-Z like I mean I icons mean, yeah icons like you know what I'm saying we got jazz on the bit. Now, I did not know about the Fila record. Uh, it was, you know, a little bit before my time. But, right, right. you know, sitting next to this guy, him wearing the Adidas <laughs> all the time. Like, yo, he can't, I can't forget the song because of him. But right. to hear the Fila song, I was like, oh, and that is kind of like a part of Brooklyn. Like, Definitely, we were we were known for 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 rocking the Fila velours and the and the and the tan joints, the low top tan joints. Like yep. I used to want to want to get those to match the Jan Sport with the buckles hanging down and all yep. that. You know, that I mean? I was the flex. Um, tell me about those times and why you decided to make that song. Well, it was um, it was a time like you know, this is like the. I don't know if any of y'all will remember. But this was like the pro gabardine French cut mock neck era. You mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. So we talking about the 70s. And then um, when you go into like the, the early to mid 80s, you know, the, um, the warm up suits. And it was kind of like a lot of people don't realize it was kind of like, um, like an Italian mob movement. Mm. because of the movies like from the godfather and stuff like that mm. and that's what kind of initiated you know us wearing you know the the velour suits velour warm-up suits and the the polyester warm-up suits in you know in the hood if you right. will and so with um with fila the thing that it first off it wasn't my idea alone right um, I did the song with um, a producer named Fresh Gordon who had a deal with Tommy Boy Records and eventually I got a single deal with Tommy Boy and um, we did the song and we were, you know, Brooklyn niggas so, you know, we, we respected, you know, my Adidas and it wasn't about the song, it wasn't about Run and, and D, you know, personally or anything like that. You know, it was a gimmick. You know, we were having fun. And I'm, I'm going to get to that a little later, like my whole purpose for even being creative and being a lyricist and, and all that shit. It wasn't money motivated like it is today. You know, we, it was recreation for us. So in that, in, that, in saying that, my fila was, uh, um, was born from that type of mentality. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to see them cats and they, saw, they, they just showed respect. You know, because they knew what it was. They knew it wasn't no violence involved. Right. You know, but you know, I kind I used to like to flex on on people <laughs> at times. You know, what I'm saying, right. let them know what time it is. Right. You know, it is Brooklyn in the building. I don't care where you from. You know, I'm jazz. You know, I, I wasn't jazz old back then. I was I was D jazz, D and that's what Fresh Gordon used to call me. He he put the D on there because he used to say there's nobody else like me, mm. and I, I appreciate yeah. that. So, but you ran into Run DMC in them. Oh yeah, back yeah. In days. Yeah, and there was no static. No, nah, I was no static. It was it, smiles. You know, we we didn't even talk about that. You know, I knew who they who they are. They, I know who they are. They know who I am, and we knew who each other was back then. So it was all it was all gravy. All right. You said you said after this, you got a single deal. Oh Tommy yeah, yeah. Know. I got a single deal. So th this this was before, before uh, everything else. The, yeah, the this was before EMI. Um, so after um, after my fila, you know, my fila was sort of like the introduction. You know, Gordon started bringing me up to um, to Tommy Boy Records. Um, he introduced me to Tom Silverman and Monica Lynch. Uh, and, you know, so one day um, Tom Silverman decided to take me, you know, that's the, that's the whole, um, 
you know, psychological beat down, take us out to dinner. Mm -hmm. And so we went to dinner and, you know, they just wanted to familiarize themselves more with me. So eventually I got a, a single deal and the single deal wasn't for rap, it was for singing. I had a song called I'm In Love and Fresh Gordon produced it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's where that started. I don't really like talking about why, that why, shit. Why, why, why not? <laughs> huh? Why not? Because I ain't, you know, at heart, you know, I ain't no R&B nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, um, as some people have let out the bag, you know, I, I sing, but I don't, you know, I'm a, I'm a shower singer, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't do karaoke and shit. Nah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah you hold can't, on. Can't be a shower singer. It was his, yeah, so it's no jazz. No, nah, I don't. I, I I sing. I could I could sing, okay. but I I ain't singing tonight. So <laughs> <laughs> so, so we we're not we, off camera. We had the discussion that um you were supposed to be Keith Sweat. Where oh, does yeah. that come from? That came from. Well, actually, actually, Keith Sweat ended up being me, <laughs> and. That's no disrespect to Keith Sweat. Mm -hmm. he, he's had um, an illustrious career and um, a great performer. Mm -hmm. And um, with, what happened was um, a guy named, that I met through um, Fresh Gordon named J.P. Edmond, he played the role of management to take me to a meeting with uh, Scott Folks, who was... Um, an A and R at uh, EMI Records at the time, and then um, Vincent Davis, who was the president of Entertainment, who put out um, Pee Wee Herman by Joe Ski Love back then. Mm -hmm. So me and me and Gordon, we had a. Um, it wasn't even. It was like a multi song or something like that. Like it would go into one beat and then go into up uh, in, into another. It started out as a, a thing that we had called Me and the Crew, and then it went into this joint called The Mission. And so, you know, I did some singing jingle shit in between, like how they do it today and they think the shit is brand new. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> so, originator. so we basically, we, that's, that's all I had. Cause you know, it wasn't like, like back then, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to the studio, I'm gonna do 15 songs. It was like, nah, we was recording out of Gordon's crib. Mm -hmm. and he had like one of the most elaborate studios that I've ever seen in anybody's crib up to, you know, at that time. Right. So, um, so we played that and, you know, they were sitting there and they were impressed, but they were like, so what do you want to do? Because I was almost singing in, in, those, in that joint as much as I was rhyming. Right. And I was like, yo, I want to rhyme. And they looked at each other and um, it was like, you don't consider, um, you know, singing. And, you know, my answer in my head was the same answer that I'm giving y'all. I was like, yo, I ain't, I ain't one of them R&B niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and no disrespect to right. R&B niggas. What, what was wrong with being an R&B nigga at the time? Because it wasn't me. Mm. That's it was not, different that's, back then. That's not what I wanted to do. It's before you know, the era of Jodeci. Can't you know, go I'm, back to Marcy talking about, yo, I'm, I got signed as a singer. They won't give a fuck. I just, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I just did, I, I did what was in my heart, you know. And, um, you know, me personally, I felt the same way as, um, and you know, it's, it's really, it's really a thing. It's not as much a thing as it used to be. It's like you, oh, you're a singer, or you're a rapper, you're a this, you know, so you can't produce and, you know, but in other genres of music, you could do that. Right. But in rap, they just they the, tried the, the whole tunnel vision whole, mentality yeah, yeah. Yeah. at the time. At the time, it was exactly. way more segmented at the time. Right. right. So, so they were like, "You're gonna do this or that," and I'm like, I felt like I should be able to do the same thing that I did creatively. You know, rhyme when I want to rhyme, sing when I want to sing. Saying. Right. And uh, so, you know, I I was just like I I pass, and. What was so ironic was that a couple of years later, um, Scott Folks became the head of a &R up at, um, at EMR, mm. and we had a meeting. Um, 
uh, Mar a, a gentleman named Marlon Prescott, who I also met through Fresh Gordon, um, he introduced me to a guy named Stan Poses. They set up a meeting at EMI with Scott Folks, and when I saw Scott, we just laughed because I was all, I was up there for what I wanted to be up there for was for you know a, a rap artist deal, right. and that's that's how it happened. And um, they gave me a budget uh, two hundred seventy five thousand, and that was more than anybody had ever got for you know a rap project back then. Wow. Mm. So wow. patience, well, patience is a virtue. Now, now that that in itself, at the time, two hundred and seventy-five, seventy-five thousand mm -hmm. was probably the biggest advance. Yeah. Now rewinding though, why would you say? Why did you say that Keep Sweat turned out to be you? Because they were going to sign me for like the what we would call like an R and B deal. They would sign. They would assign me as an R and B artist. Right. So and they turned around and signed Keith. They signed him a few months after okay. our dealings. Yeah. And then he became what they wanted you to be. Okay. Right. All right. Right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, damn, when you got all that, like, when you heard the number, mm -hmm. 275, what was the reaction? Um, I was cool because for the most part, um, and this is this is this is to like not disillusion people. They didn't they didn't hand me a check for two hundred seventy five grand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that paid for the trip to London. You know myself, Jay Z, Irv Gotti. Um, that paid for everybody's food, um, our accommodations the whole time. You know we had. Um, I mean it was great, but that money wasn't going in my pocket. But money was provided for me. Um, they assigned um, these accountants who were um, actually partners with Bert Padell, mm -hmm. and um, that's how the, that's how the money went. You know, I would you know I would get a stipend every month. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like kind of like soft slavery a little bit. Right. <laughs> how much was the stipend? Um, it was like for my pocket. It was like fifteen hundred a month. But back then, that was a decent amount of money because they were paying for everything else. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I, I had an apartment. I was actually on Leffert's place. That's another story in Brooklyn. Um, so they paid for that. If I wanted, I didn't. I didn't want to to own a car, but they I rented cars. You know, did whatever I wanted to do, and mm -hmm. they would take care of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like the the fifteen hundred. You know, if I got if I had a check and I just wanted to ball the shit up and throw it out the window, it wouldn't have changed my life. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that was that was a good part about it. Everything was provided, but you know, as as a mature individual or more mature than I was <laughs> then, mm -hmm. you know, you will want to control your own finances. Right. And what if you change your mind? You know, they still like, nah, we doing this and you under contract, so you know. Mm. So, so in comparison to how it is today, back then, you didn't get paid per show. The label um, basically funded the tour and you got paid through the label. You didn't get paid from a promoter or a hosting fee, nothing like that? Well, there were some shows that I did get paid that way, mm -hmm. but the, the biggest tour at that time that I was a part of, um, I was opening up for Jody Watley. Mm. And mm. Um, yeah, so I was on a... Um, I was on that tour for like five weeks mm -hmm. and the record company, they, you know, they financed everything for me. You know, um, Jay went on tour with me. Um, Irv didn't want to go on tour. I don't know why, but he, um, he introduced me to uh, uh, DJ Tron, my man Tehran. I think his last name is Smith. Um, and we did that for five weeks. Um, and I had, you know, spot dates and stuff like that where I get paid. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the, the tour support from the label, nah, I didn't get the money in my hand, you know. Just everything was provided for. And then we did radio in every venue, you know, every market rather. So, mm -hmm. um, That's not soft slavery. That's pimping and hoeing. 
Yeah, man. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thank you. No, I'm serious. No, nah, nah, it is, though. Nah. You don't give them the money. You don't you buy right. them whatever they want. You pay for whatever it is they want, but you never let them touch the cash. Why do, why do you think the, the advance was so... Well, not the advance, but the budget was so large? Um, Honestly, because Ian, I was the first artist ever... First rap artist ever signed to EMI. Mm -hmm. So I was getting a small taste of how they would sign everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Besides, I, I can safely say us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they were like, we don't know. And they probably, it was, they were probably signing artists and groups for double that. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. they were like, well, shit, we give them half of that, you know, and it's way more than they ever saw, you know, as far as the budget is concerned. Did you did you get any uh, any hate because of because of that number? Was that something that was known throughout the industry or throughout throughout hip hop? Not ironically, no, nah, it wasn't really that known. And if it was, I didn't know about it. And you know, I definitely, I mean, shit, it wasn't no social media. So <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I couldn't put it on, you know, I couldn't put myself on blast and um you know, it just was what it was. But I think the prestige of EMI and me being the first rap artist signed, it kind of gave an indication that, you know, something was... You was up. Yeah, basically. Right. You was up. Because they didn't sign rappers. They signed you the first one. You should have sung, man. You could have been Drake. Could have been the first Drake. It could have been Jazz O. <laughs> Jazz O could have been the first Drake. But you're you you're the first a lot of things. This yeah. would have just been another another feather. Are you and I don't mean to jump ahead yeah. of the story, but I really want to know, are you aware of the do you sometimes take inventory and stock of the amount of things that you've started? Sometimes. But you know, again, I gotta say, like, when I started doing this, like, it wasn't for the money. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was from my guard brother. Um telling me that he bet that I couldn't write a rhyme. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? How much, is, how much was the bet? Nah, it wasn't a money bet. Oh, it was just, it was just my little god <laughs> brother. He, he ain't had no money. fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> but he, you know, he was betting that I couldn't do it. And, um, you know, I, I, I entertained him after a while. He, he kept asking me, kept asking me. And, you know, may he rest in power, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. my god brother, Eric Oliver. Um, and so, you know, I, I wrote an eight bar rhyme and he was amazed and I had to say it for him like 10 times and shit. And then after that, you know, my head was like this and I just started writing shit, you know. Mm. You still remember that rhyme? Yeah, I do, but I ain't saying it. Nah, ain't saying it. I'm just putting the nail in the car. <laughs> yeah. That's quiet. My question is, what, after you got your deal, what was the driving force that made you reach back and bring certain individual, individuals with you on tour? What individuals? You, you didn't go on tour by yourself. Well, what, what individuals? The individuals Jane you Irvin. bought. Right. Jay, nah, that's why I didn't want to say it because I could, it could be he more said, that I don't know. Oh, said, oh, no, that's that's all. That's okay, that's a good, that's a good yeah. out. That's yeah. a good out. That's a good out, right? Yeah. Right. 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 Um, but um, yeah, why? I mean, that's... I mean, I know this, this doesn't sound very humble, but that's who I am. That's mm. how I rock. You know what I'm saying? And everybody who knows me from the projects, everybody who knows me all my career, everybody who knows me growing up, they know that's how I rock. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, there's people in here now that, um, that can um, give testament of how, like, uh, Yankee Stadium, for instance, you know, we were trying to get in. It was mad security points and everything like that. And, um, you know, in, in my mind, I, I came to a point and I, and I was just telling, I don't, don't want to blow nobody up, but I was just telling them how, you know, like I, I'm old school. I'm not going to change in that aspect. Whereas like we go to a venue and I could get in, but everybody else can't get in. I'm turning around. Right. Because, you know, it's ain't no, it's ain't no mix and match. You know what I'm saying? Right. These my people. Right. And I feel like I'm my people and my people are me. me. Right. And if you can't let my people in, and I know it's business. I'm not saying that security is fucked up because, you know, they'll let me in and, you know, 
might not consider everybody else or anybody else, right. but that's just how I rock. You know, like we gonna we gonna roll like that. This we came here together. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm gonna switch up. I, I don't do that. And I, I I love people too much to do that. You know what I'm saying? The same way, man. Right. I'd be like, get yeah. out. <laughs> If I'm if I'm your people though, my first thought is, bro, go in there and do the show. I'll catch up with you after. But you yeah. gotta go to work. Like this is for the the, yeah. the bigger picture is you getting the shine. I don't need to be there. Like, I go get in it. there yeah, and get it popping. You, you, and, hear, you hear the term respect from the door. Right. Yeah. No, I, I can dig that. And you're not you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. But it it wasn't their choice, it's my choice. Mm. Right. So even if they felt that way, and I'm sure that they would understand. It's not my choice. Because you need your entourage with you. No, I don't need nothing. I choose it. Yeah. Now I get what you're saying. I'm not trying. Not trying to back down. Sometimes I know, Jazz. You know how we do. But I'm saying sometimes you need your team with you. You know what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. Because when when you go in these spots, you know you see a whole bunch of niggas with like a hundred dudes, and you by yourself is like, it's how I felt when you was in Cali. And I'm saying, I'm not for here with fine niggas, and there's like a thousand niggas in here, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, son, we need more niggas. For protection, here. protection purposes. Yeah, well. you mm -hmm. know what I mean? You want to make right, sure yeah. your people get in there for safe and get home safe. Yes, indeed. For that reason. Yeah, I know I know many times, like, where I just elected to not go out, and you were always here. And, and I'm not saying that I was lucky for not being there. I just wonder, like, what would have happened and how it would have turned out had I gone. You know, you hear about like, oh, runner got stabbed. Mm. Such and such this, mm. such and such got shot. Mm. Cat got his head bust open. You know what I'm saying? Just right. too too much. But um, I, I, I just don't, I, I roll with my people. If I say you my people, and I would expect you, you ain't got to say it. But you know, I expect you to have the same sentiment. Do you feel like you always got that respect back from those same people that you stood up for? Some, but it won't. It won't change. It won't change me though, because right. I'm I'm doing it just as much for myself as I'm doing it for other people. You know what I'm saying, and that's the first. That's the primary goal. Like, like people misinterpret um, selfishness. Like people say when you selfish. You know, it's like a negative thing, but everybody's selfish. How else, what else can you be but selfish? Because everything you do derives from the self. So, right. Yeah. So when you're saying you're selfish, it's just a, a misconception of the meaning of, of the word, you know. So people, people misuse it. But I, I'm, you know, in that aspect, I'm selfish because I, I plan to, you know, amidst all the programming that we're bombarded with every day to um make decisions on my own you know and sometimes we make decisions and we think that they're our decisions but they're really decisions that came from some third party. a horde of okay. programming, programming and subliminal shit yes. right. right or or just right just right. a regular daily action that we take it's like it's like inception uh oh yeah a great people movie. plant yeah. the idea in your head and after a while it, it manifests. You think it's your idea, but it's really been a, a conglomerate yeah. of different things that led you towards thinking like that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to go even further back than that. Because um, you mentioned Jay-Z, you mentioned Irv Gotti. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time, they were probably in their teens. Yeah. Yeah. How, Jay, Jay had just turned 18. I didn't even cut you off like that. Right. How, how, did you, how did you come to be involved with the music? Well, Jay, I met Jay, uh, I think he had, what was he like? I think Jay was like 15. And um, my man, uh, Nike from the Mighty Shirt Kings, mm -hmm. um, you know, him and Jay lived in the same building. And I was just coming home from, um, not the joint, but I was just coming, <laughs> <laughs> I was just coming home from, from Old Dominion, I, I I went to school for two years at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, mm -hmm. and um, I I basically dropped out. I didn't want to do that, you know. I wanted to, I wanted to rhyme and shit. What was your major? Huh? What was your major? It was nothing. It, it was supposed to be accounting, but I ain't go to I didn't go to class enough <laughs> wow. to have a major because I didn't want to do it. 
I was doing it to I was doing it to please my my mother and my grandmother and and I went through with it but I had to look at myself and say like yo I can't live I can't let them live their life vicariously through me right you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying I got to live my own life and it was hard to do because they both had done and have done so much for me you know what I'm saying so right. it was difficult for me to be like yo that's not what I want to do it's quiet. yeah I ain't doing that you don't want to um, disappoint them exactly right so um so I came home from college and um you know I got me a job uh one of my boys Ron Henley he hooked me up with a job made me an assistant dispatcher at um this company called a better messenger company um yeah, my memory is, is kind of like long ago shit is kind of good. That's what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. You so, remember names and everything. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they my people. And my, right. You know, my people, I remember. Um, <clears throat> so basically, damn, I lost track. It's going better, too many message. Branches. better message. Yeah, yeah, better messenger company. So I came back from school and um, Nike was telling everybody, shout out to Nike by the way, and shout out to all the Shirt Kings here and no longer here, but with us in spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so Nike was, was having a conversation. I say conversation, but he said he was arguing with somebody and he was talking about, yo, Jazz is the best MC. And he was like, yo, it's this, it's this young kid. And you know, his name wasn't Jay-Z yet. You know, some people was calling him Shawnee D his name was Sean and you know everybody had like a, a you know a D because D and B you know made it sound sh yeah, bolder yeah, and stronger. Yeah. yeah more <laughs> robust <laughs> or, you know. or, or ice this ice that right yeah. Yeah. ice is like slick my first smooth. rap name was ice A <laughs> Yeah, for no what? reason. What was it? It's Ice A. It was no A in my name. Just Yo, Ice A. a. Not, that's how I be. I was like shit. eight years old. Like, I'm Ice A. <laughs> Can you hold <laughs> on him right now? What? Ice you don't want it. Hell no. You don't want it. Don't want it. Don't Ice A. It seems like, yeah. seem like a lot of lights can catch that Ice A. Oh, oh. That's low blow. That was a light skin, man. Yo. Come on, man. That's it. Image, image, man. Right. So, but yeah, Shawnee, so Shawnee D. Yeah, so you know, and shout out to Jay by the way. You know, right. love all the time. Right. Um, That's good to hear. So always. Mm -hmm. um, so um, so Nike was going back and forth, and and some cat was saying like, nah, you know, this young kid Sean, he's like, and Nike was like, yo, I don't care. Jazz is the best. Jazz better than everybody. And I'm. That's not even a paraphrase. That's a quote. You know, you can find him and he'll tell you the same thing. Um, so, so he he's kind of like he's kind of like the the deal maker or the broker um, for like all of this stuff because it, it, there's other stuff that that went on. Um, but long story short, he set it up to where we met and on on my side in the driveway, like when you come like. This is uh, Park Avenue, and then the driveway where you going through all the way through to all of the um, buildings. Right. So we met, we met there, and so he's like, "Yeah, we gonna see who the best." And you know, Jay was there, and he was like, "Yo, who what did look like at the time? Huh? What did both of y'all look like? You had the flat tops. You had the what was the, what now, was the vibe then? Right? Um, I'm trying to think if I had a flat top yet. I know I had, I know I had a fade." But the flat top wasn't really accentuated yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was in development and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm was it Fila Velours? Was it the Cosby? Yeah. Cosby sweaters. Fila Fila Velours. It was the um, shit. It was warm, so it was like the the Hawaiian shirts was popping mm -hmm. back then. Hawaiian um, Sophie. You no, know, exactly. And the other print shirts and. Um, you know, and um, it was just around the time like the um, the flared out leaves, you know what I'm saying? So it was around that time. So that was that time was was kind of just leaving, you know, right. with the flared out leaves. Right. And um, so 
So we we so we was like who going they were like who gonna rhyme first? And they looked at Jay and he was like, and I I went, I shrugged my shoulders, I, I don't care. And then I was like, shit, we ain't gonna be here all day going, <laughs> you know, shrugging our shoulders and yeah, shit. So, yeah. you know, as a show of strength, not to like bombard anybody, but as a show of strength, I was like, all right, I'm gonna rhyme first. And I rhyme and everybody was into it. But the difference was it, it turned out to not really be a battle. It was it was more like a, a display. It was more like a joust, if you will. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So a display of skills, but I wasn't like going at him like, yo, your sneakers is turned up and you know, you got two jump shots left in, you know, and <laughs> um, <In> the layups. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, so I rhymed, and then he rhymed, and what had impressed upon me was the fact that. He was the first person I ever heard rhyme that reminded me, you know, as far as cadence, vocal projection, and all that shit of myself. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I wouldn't, and I'll never say this shit, you know, that he was as good as or better or oh, any. And I'm not saying that because it's a fact. I'm saying because me as a lyricist, I'm never gonna give that shit up to anybody. <laughs> That's just how it is. This period. This yeah. period. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. all of it is really opinionated anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And nobody could be the best you, but I could say, I mean, you know, um, but I mean we all know Jay Jay's career and his um accolades business wise and creative, you know what I'm saying, speaks volumes for who he is. So right. but but um but at that time you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, yeah, this young nigga, you know, a little rough on the edges, but... But he shocked you. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Um, so at the end of that, I think we rhymed two times a piece and, you know, and... Um, That's all it took? Yeah, because we weren't even, we wasn't rhyming against each other. We was just like, all right, I'm going to rhyme, I'm going to rhyme. Because right. we were waiting for niggas to break out so we could be like, yo... Let's write some shit together. And that's what we started doing. Right. We started writing shit together. You know, um, Jay would come to my crib with the rhyme dictionary. And I go get um back then Hagen Dazs was battling with Frozen Glaja and shit. Yeah. Oh no, I don't know how far. Yeah, I remember Frozen Yeah, yeah see. <laughs> yeah. So that was the battle. So sometimes we get Hagen Dazs, sometimes we get Frozen Glaja. And I don't know how our stomachs could take it. But we would <laughs> we would follow up with some fucking Fruit Loops or Apple Jacks Jesus. and milk. <laughs> be, oh man, yeah, be high, be high as like fuck on sugar. I'm beating on the table. He rhyming. He pass it to me. Mm. I'm rhyming. He beating on the table, and that's how we did it. And when we went to um, like you know when Cats had the music out, we come out there. Um, I don't know how somewhere he acquired um, a Roland. It was a little Roland drum machine. It's called a DDM 110. And you know, when you turn it off, you could still hear the drums from the thing. Mm. And we used to make our own beat. So we used to go where they had the music out, and we would bring the DDM 110. Mm. And it was like if y'all ever seen um, like that Bugs Bunny shit when. When everybody saw when he playing like a um conductor and everybody go, Leopold, Leopold, yeah. Leopold, Leopold. You know what I'm saying? And and I I'm just telling it like it is. Yeah. That's how they was treating us like when we come to the music. We shut shit down. Like, like, yo, these dudes are here, yo, what what y'all need? And then we hook up the drum machine and we go back and forth, just like we did in the crib. Mm. And that's that's how it was. And that's that's how it started. Jazz and Jay Z. Was the was the plan to implant or impress your morals on him, like the same moral stance and moral code that you have as far as I'm not leaving anybody behind. This is how I am, one one for all, for one. Did you impress that part onto him as well as the music, or did, was um, it strictly just the music? I, and he watched everything. Because you were his senior, right. of course, at this time. Hmm? You were his senior at this time. Yeah, of course. So so how I mean, much? I still am. Right. <laughs> in, in in quantum. Right. right. Yeah. Quantum. So so wow. was it more than just writing rhymes together? Were you kinda like trying to trying to mold him 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Celebrate. I was molding them. We went to jail together. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. Nah, what? Think, yeah, because I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I was nah. going to We went to jail. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, the breeze past. Now, we, now we, we, we had I, to, I, I had to instill that. I was saying we got, young boy, I was saying we got a, a I know, right? Moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's a terrible positive job. example. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> come, to Long, come to Long Island with me. You know, I got, you know, I got 20s of blow and mm. they won it. Right. And, and he used to roll with me. Um, but no, um, we used to do shows and uh, I know y'all remember or at least heard of like Broadway International, the rooftop, yeah, yeah. uptown, and um, well, we are uptown. I'm saying, um, but um, yeah, Brooklyn. I'm in, in my head. I'm always in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Yo, let's go uptown. On a hundred and like two thousand million street. Yeah, right. Um, but um, yeah. So one night, uh, we were doing a show. And you know, I had some work in my pocket and it was this cat and matter, to be honest with you, I think the nigga snitched on me. Um, but he was, um, he was like, yo, I got, I got some buyers and um, they want some shit. You know, and it wasn't, it wasn't crazy money, but I had like, you know, I could probably like maybe like seven, $800, you know, mm -hmm. in the 20s and a couple of 50s or some shit, you know. Mm -hmm. And I I I don't glor let yeah let's say that first I'm not glorifying that shit at right. all. It's just no, let's get that out the way. That's right. yeah. So, but this is this is after the deal. Nah nah, this is way before the deal. Oh, all right, cool. Yeah. This is back when you first met Jay. Yeah. Right. So we we were doing shows and um, so I used to the way, and the nigga's name is Ron, but not Ron Henley, but the nigga's name is Ron. I really think that. He snitched on me, but I ain't trying to start no beef or nothing. I love the dude, and um, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, where's hey, this, man. Where's this going? Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. going to get a phone call as soon as this drops. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. ain't no snitch to me. I know. Come on, he'll tell anybody I know you. You said that? <laughs> yeah. Yo. Hey, I, but I, I'm not, I didn't say it out the blue, though. It's like from deduction. You know, I, I, that was deduction. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. who knew? You know, I, you ain't see me pass nothing. Only one person. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> process of elimination. Back, right. That's it. So basically, um, one night uh, we were leaving, and um, my man had a, uh, my man Errol. He he was the only one who was driving back then, and he had a. Um, a busted um, headlight. So the cops, I, they were harassing people anyway, but he just gave them a great reason to harass us. Right. And I was trying to hide the work and um, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ball right there. Yeah, it didn't work. So so we got, we got arrested, me, Jay, um, Errol and um, Jason, they were brothers from Long Island. And actually, they were um, cousins, first cousins of, um, of Cool KG, who was my DJ. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, yeah, we, that's what I meant. Like, you know, jail. We ain't go to jail, but we got booked. Right. You know what I'm saying? We got booked, mm -hmm. and we spent a couple of days, you know, Central bookings, you know, and they move you around. It's a psychological head fuck, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. So, but yeah, it's back to your um, question. Hold on, but I you did, beat those charges. Huh? You beat those charges or did you end up having to do? No, misdemeanor. Misdemeanor? Because, yeah, because I never got knocked before that. All right. So it's like, and they were like, it ain't like you running a cartel with that little bit of work you got on you. So. Right. Um, so basically, to answer your question, yeah, my, my intent was to build on his um, integrity by example and at the same time not impose upon him or anybody else. Like, yo, do what you do, but this is how I do it. And you make a choice. You know, you want to be that or this or some of the, you know, adopt some of anything 
Right. You know, that's that's how that's life. You know, you make the choices to become more of yourself. So, right. um, yeah, that was my intention. And I always impressed upon him some of the things I did. And even in interviews, um, I always told the interviewer, like when they asked me, you know, they asked me a similar question like here, like, you know, they but they were asked why, like why, why this dude is your deal. It's your money, all this other shit. Why him? And I was like, because he's worth it. He has the talent. And he's, my, he's like my little brother. And I don't want him to go through a lot of the same bullshit that I had to go through to get to this point. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of politics, you know. And, you know, I was very, I was pretty militant back then. You know, if anybody did any research. Yeah. You know, my history, like kind of with the Ansars and shit like that. So um, I didn't want him to go through any of that shit. So, you know, I figured like with, with Irv too, you know, if I take them along with me, you know what I'm saying? They'll get their faces known because like y'all know, it wasn't no social media and mm -hmm. like we could post and shit, right. and be, you know, get some views. So that was the way to, to get popular. So I used to let, you know, not let, but I used to have them running with me. Now back in the days his name was DJ Irvin, right? DJ Irv. DJ Irv. Mm -hmm. DJ Irv. Did yeah. you start Jay hustling? Did he see you hustling and decide to <laughs> jump in or Yeah, but that happened that happened on two fronts. You know. It it was me and um then it was uh De Haven. Hmm. Yeah. So um yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not proud of that. But, you know, that's that's what we did out out in the, you know, in the street. Right. That's what we did. And it wasn't like it wasn't like we were starving like, oh, I'm doing this. So, you know, this will ensure my, my next right. meal and shit. Right. You know, we did it because that's what niggas do when you get to a certain point And it's like you want to blow up and it sound ignorant as fuck because it is. And you look at niggas and like every day, this nigga got a fresh pair of kicks on. He got a little jewelry on his neck, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, hmm, I'm going to do what he's doing or try to um, right. up one, you know. It's, right. just, it's just what it is. It's ignorant, but, you know. That's, that's the right. line, right? Fuck the haven for caving. That's why we don't speak. Made many supposed Who to make statements. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, no. yeah, I don't, yeah, I, one thing I could say, like, if I'm not sure about anything, like, I'm not gonna speak on it. I'm not, I, I speak on it all day, like, you know, but I, I won't claim or um, vouch for, you know, as far as it being the truth, if gotcha. you don't know of anything, because yeah. I, I don't know. We were yeah. saying that, uh, I, uh, we said that, uh, <clears throat> Last sit down, and someone came out with some fake paperwork on Benny. Mm. And you know, I grew up with the the morals of you you don't put things like that on people without hard evidence. Right. You know what I mean? If you didn't look it up, you didn't go to dot state gov, whatever the hell you need to go look that shit up at, and you saw it for yourself, and you can't really repeat shit like that. You know mm. what I'm saying? So that's a that. That's a real severe thing to put on someone. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. We yep. were talking about that earlier, right? Mm -hmm. we were yeah. Talking about that earlier, the um the repercussions and the, the impact that you can have on people's lives by um, you know, just recklessly running your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we, we were talking about too, like social media is going rampant with, you know, and I'm I'm not the one to sit here and say who is a gangster and who is not, but I sure do see a lot of gangsters doing all this. I'm like, God damn, yeah, like you're putting niggas in jail, jail. getting yeah. niggas put laid yeah. out in the street. Like, damn, why you talk? I know why they talking like that, because they want the attention. Right. I guess they want to diversify and, you know, get some numbers, get their numbers up uh -huh. and all that shit on social media. <laughs> and I get it. Right. But like that shit ain't, I don't understand that, that. That ain't it. It ain't. That ain't it. I want to know how, how did you connect with Irv back then? Um, 
my management, uh, Stan Poses, introduced me or introduced us to um, me and Jay to Irv. Um, and it was a time like it was maybe like a, um, a week or two before we were headed out to London to record mm. my first album. So what had happened was, um, of course, my, my first choice was my man, Cool KG. Right. He was my DJ. Mm. And I was like, yo, man. And I was looking for him. I couldn't find him. I was like, damn, I ain't looking for this nigga. I see him all the time. Like, that's just how, <laughs> that's, you know, that's just right. how life mm -hmm. is. Like, right. yo, I'm trying to find him. So, you know, I could tell him like, yo, everything, Everything's paid for. You got a free trip. You come back when you want. You know, everything. It's like we, you know, we going to London, record my album. And I was like, yo, you wanna come? And he was like, nah, just just hit me up when you get back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. What do you think that was about? You would have to ask him. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I mean we didn't have we didn't have any problems or anything, but I don't. I didn't know what was going on in his life, so you know, it's mm. it's not my right to say whether he made a good or a bad decision. You right. know what I'm saying? But, but did you find that like? When it was you... it was a little disheartening for me because, you know, that was my nigga. Like, yo, like come on, like, you know, nigga, we made it, nigga. Like, come on, let's <laughs> yeah. go. Right. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to shoot dice no more. We ain't got to. You know, let's go. Right. And he was just like, nah, I'll see you when you come back. And that and that's not to his fault. I'm not saying that because, again, I don't know what was going on in his life. Right. And, you know, shout out to him and love to him and his whole family. You know what I'm saying? But you never know. Right. Yeah, you don't know. So how did Irv get, get thrown into the equation? So when I, when I informed... Uh, the management, and so it it wasn't um it wasn't just Stan poses um he had a partner his name was John K, so I figured like when I'm talking about something it's good to mention people, you know what I'm saying so they not you know lost the obscurity, um, so Stan poses, I don't know where the hell he found Irv but <laughs> you know he found Irv and he introduced us. To Irv, and he said he's a DJ, and he was like, "All right, fuck it. Like I don't care." Cause I was I was asking KG to come. He didn't have to do no scratching or none of that shit. You know, it was just because, yo, you my man, you my right. DJ. This we were doing this together. You know, um, I used to go like we used to make um, tapes, not. CD mixtapes. We used to make cassette tapes of uh, him, you know, him cutting and spinning on turntables and me rhyming. You know, mm. some of them we had for like a half hour, some for like 45 minutes. Mm. And I was just rhyming straight, not taking a break. Sometimes we took a break, like the turns, you know, you had to turn the tape over because it was before they had the ones right. that, you know, you could, um, you know, that, that is reverse. automatically, yeah, yeah going on the other on. side. So you, you was rhyming straight for 45 minutes. Yeah. So exercises no you breaks. doing. Nah, no breaks. Y'all was young. I had 55 lungs, my nigga. <laughs> 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 Y'all had 55 lungs. <laughs> for real. Like, I, nah, I did it. I mean, and, and, um. To what, I mean, hold on. Why? Yeah, why? Because what what was the the mindset? Yo, we gonna go for forty five minutes. Was that because something that you heard? Like, okay, this I heard this person rhyme for like two hours every day, or this person rhyme for da da da. I got this tape, and homeboy was rhyming the whole tape. So I'm gonna do. You know what I mean? Like, what, what was, it was the? Yeah, it it was two things. It was organic, like he said, but it was also that we were hearing about um, we were hearing about Melly Mel. And Melly Mel had did a, a, a tape or he was live or whatever, and he was rhyming for like a half hour. So, you know, niggas automatically go, oh, word, nigga? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so we like, right, right. So we like, come Roll on. up the sleeves. Let's yeah, 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 let's let's go. Right. You know, and it wasn't even about competition. It was about stepping your own game up. Well, right. You know, because it was, a again, it was a creative thing. Like, niggas ain't hate each other. Like, oh, fuck you, nigga. You rhyme for a half hour. Like, nah, that's good. I'm going right. to rhyme for 45 minutes. Mm. You know? Right. So, but it, it, was, it was just one of those things. And it was, again, it was creative. It was to do things that, you know, to find things that people don't do, you know, patterns that people didn't really um, exercise and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that's, that's kind of how I came up with the triplet style because of that. It just mm. came out. I segue for y'all, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, that so, was so, more questions. So yeah. we call it double time now. Right. Right. You 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 labeled as the triplet style. The triplet style. And mm -hmm. why was it the triplet style? It was the triplet style because. And can you give us an example? I told you I ain't doing <laughs> that. I'm fucking with you. Nah, but I, I have to in order for you to understand yeah, though, a right. little bit at least. So. So the double time is on really a beat that under normal circumstances, they just change the, they just half the position of the, the kick and the snare, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So where they really rhyming and they slow the beat down. So they really rhyming regular, but mm -hmm. they rhyming fast, like, digga, 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 digga. Yeah. you know, like, um, like, um, like nigga what nigga who is is double time. Right. You know, the jazz overlax that ever heard of me, worldwide originated, say word, word to me. me. Yeah, so yeah. that's double time. With triple time is like my brother and the singer technique is applaudable, living in luxury and it's affordable. No other brother is better than me, the J, the A, the Z. So it's over mm. a different type of beat. Thank you. <laughs> Finally yes, got a rhyme sir. out of him. Yeah. Right? Right? <laughs> I'm a ham, right? I'm officially a ham. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it, I, I wanted to explain it to you, and then, you know, so, so the difference is that the beat is slower, and as far as time signatures involved, you're talking about um, when they say triplets, it's the equivalent to um, like twenty fourths. Mm -hmm. So it's like twenty fourths notes. So you have. You have, um, in, in a measure, you have quarter notes. You have one, two, four, three, three, four, four. Right? right? Um, You know, eighths, you have one, two, three, four, and then so on, so on, sixteenths, yeah, 16, you know. I don't know if I could still clap that fast. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, so then it's 24ths, because 24ths is like in between 30 seconds and sixteenths. Right. So it's like if if y'all if anybody in here ever fuck with a drum machine, and that's how I learned a lot of this shit. Yeah, twenty four is like. Yeah, the thicker, the thicker, the thicker, the thicker. Yeah. So so that's that's where the twenty fourths, and that the reason why it's called um, the reason why I said triplets because in the drum machine you'll have um, um, with um, with the I guess the quantization you'll have sixteenths. And then you'll have 16 triplets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in between 16 and 32nd notes, you have what they call 16 triplets, triplets. which is really 24th notes. Right. So yeah, that's where I got the triplet the style. Triplets, triplet mm -hmm. style. And, oh. and, mm -hmm. and actually what, what happened was me and KG was making a tape and I was writing a rhyme. I'd already written the rhyme, but I was trying to figure out how I'm going to say this one line. It was too many syllables to fit in that one line. Mm. So um, I basically uh, bunched it in, but I, it had to be on time. So what happened was I just tripled it up. I don't remember the line, but you know, but we made the tape and after we were listening to the tape, KG kept going back to that part and he was like, yo, you should do that more. Hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. I ignored him because I thought I was the best in the universe. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then till later, you know, um, me and Jay start, you know, this was a little later on, me and Jay start writing together. And, um, you know, he eventually, he came up with the idea. He was like, yo, that <laughs> one, because that's tight. So when, he, when, um, when I did it, he was saying like, yo, we should do, 
we should do a whole song. This was after I got the deal, of course, and after the um, after the first album. See, Jay is like he's he's sort of like with with this with his music shit. He's like my antithesis. Like mm. I don't really give a fuck about fame and all that shit. I just, if anything, my my goal, even being here, is to set the record straight so that nobody could say, you know, this is that, and Jazz said this, Jazz said, okay, Jazz said this, okay, how can we verify this shit, right. you know? And yeah. I'll make sure, because my ego can't stand it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna say some shit, and then somebody can come out the blue and be like, nigga, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So, um, so he, he's the, he's the marketing, he like, he, he was like some way to, to become more popular and he was like, yo, we should do a whole song like that. And I was like, man, that's a good idea. So we did the song and that, that was the song, the first one called The Originators mm -hmm. with the, with the triplet style. Right. And, and Jay was the one who said we should do that. Mm -hmm. He says it, he says it, um, in the beginning of the song, he said, you know, something to the effect that niggas can't understand the old triplet style, mm. you know. So was the originators a group? Nah, it was just the name of a song. And we weren't a group, it was like, cause my deal, it was me, it was, it was the jazz and yeah. that was it. But I had that same, you know, we go into the club mentality, like, nah, I ain't leaving niggas behind, mm. you know. Because if other niggas would have stepped up, I'd have been like, yo, nigga, the back cover, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm. But um, yeah, like I, I wanted him to get get shine before, you know, whatever he planned on doing. Mm -hmm. Because he was rhyming. He was rhyming. So I knew he was interested. I know he wanted to do it. But I, I knew I think that he understood the realities and he understood like the uniqueness of my deal. So it wasn't so much like a, um, I'm gonna get a deal like that too easy, but he understood that, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a deal and I'm gonna go beyond that, you know? And it turned, it turned out like, you know, he found out that um, what I heard said was that my management was trying to sign him and they were done with me and all that other shit because of the fact that, you know, I become an answer and, you know, I was like, I'm not really fucking with y'all like that or any of that stuff. And, um, but can you break all that down? Uh, me becoming an answer? Yeah. Okay. So when I was, when I was young, it used to be these guys that come on the, on the train, they said they had a, a school for kids and they didn't get uh, public funding. So they were asking for donations and they wore what I now know as a white jello beer and some of them wore Emma's and other, you know, headdress. And um, so I ain't know who the hell these dudes were, but you know, you, you didn't feel uncomfortable like they were going, you know, Right. Come from under their shit with, with the, you know, with the joint and be like, all right, everybody drop your shit. Right. <laughs> but, um, but I didn't know. So later on, I found out <clears throat> this was when I had just come back too from going to college. Mm -hmm. And it was this um, after school gym, the actual junior high, <clears throat> excuse me, the junior high school that I had gone to, um, IS318. They had an after school center and a lot of the cats from the projects, you know, we went there and ball, you know, from three o'clock to about five, five thirty. Mm -hmm. And um, it just so happened that the Sunni Muslims, they were they had it open like they were, you know, they were in charge of opening the gym. Right. And so I wasn't eavesdropping, but, you know, shit, I could hear Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just heard them talking about stuff like, yo, yeah, these, you know, these, those guys, they jammed up, they jammed up. And I was curious, like, who they talking about? So then, you know, I started just doing light research and, um, you know, I found out who they were talking about. And then... Um, who were they talking about? 
They were talking about Ansar's. They were talking about Dr. York. They were talking about his philosophy and his um, perspective on things was all crossed up because Sunnis are known to be uh, traditional, you know, in the aspect of Islam. Right. Mm -hmm. But so, and, you know, let it be known that I'm, I'm not a part of, and, it, and I'm not saying it like it's something not to be a part of, but I'm not a part of any of that stuff anymore. Right. Um, but at the time, at the time, why was it appealing to you? It was appealing to me because it represented a type of discipline. And let me let me be let me be frank for a second and stop being jazz or I'm gonna be frank. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for God. Cause every you know, it's it's like in the hood, like everybody talking about somebody like, who the fuck is this guy? Mm -hmm. So I was looking for God. And so I I searched in the places that I figured God would be. So I opened up the Bible and I started reading. And I was like, man, this shit don't really come together like, like a novel, like part one, part two, like it's all bunched up. So I didn't really get the picture. Oh, did, the, did you get the picture of how much murder and I did get the picture of that. <laughs> oh, yo, right. Yo, son, the Bible is one of the illest books ever. So. Ex exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> so in doing that, <clears throat> I was still searching. So I said, okay, I have a perspective on that, you know, between uh, relatives and what I read in the Bible. And I realized that um, the perspective that I was given wasn't a, a realistic perspective. So um, I ventured into the Quran. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I saw did, did the Quran seem like an easier read? No. No, definitely no. not. It was, yeah. it was a bunch of stories. It wasn't pieced together, definitely wasn't chronologically correct. Mm -hmm. um, so, I basically, um, I, I was kind of like, what the fuck? So anyway, what, what led me toward the Ansars is that it was the more realistic and even though there was a lot of spiritual, quote unquote, spookism, right. um, going on or in the air or insinuated it was still i still gravitated toward it because it was something that i felt gave me gave me something that i can add to myself and it was a matter of like discipline and it was a matter of legacy a, a, a community you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. because what happened was um I met a brother and he had the he had the table mm -hmm. on 59th Street. And it's it's like it was like fate because you know every week I would go and after you know after the whole monthly thing, I would go up to um Bert Padell's office and pick up a check. Mm -hmm. You know. Way before Zell, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. <laughs> so go pick up a check and he would be right there. He was selling oils, incense, and he had some books. And then he had what's known as the True Light Tapes. So I was like, why not? So I started listening. And in short, a lot of the shit made sense to keep from putting y'all niggas to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a lot of it made sense. <laughs> And no, you believe it or not, there's there's a lot of people who would love to hear the breakdown of that information. Yeah. Now, me personally, mm -hmm. I used to battle those guys. Oh yeah, I you know I know a little something, mm -hmm. and I would notice like uh, some of their literature would have some some obscure uh, uh, um, definitions or or translations that right. didn't match up to what the original Hebrew text was saying. Right. So we used to go at it with those those guys every time we seen them because it's like, yo, why are you selling this to people and it's not accurate? Right. right. Misleading. Right. And and to be totally honest with you, I had I had my doubts and um and eventually um 
I started, I started doing like some of the editing for some of those books, like a little further down the line. Mm -hmm. But you know, they they didn't want me involved in that because mm -hmm. I was I was putting the work in, you know. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of that, mm -hmm. and a lot of it was because. Um, and, and, and I'm going to say this, I'm, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you had people who were not really suited to do the editing and the translations mm -hmm. and the proper sentence structure right. and things of that nature. And me, in my mind, I felt like, yo, you're going to get a certain, just like if you, you do a certain genre of music, you're going to attract a certain, you know, type of people to your to your music right. so it's the same thing like i felt like you know you almost going to get the dregs of society who can read a little bit right you know what i'm saying that's how i felt and i felt that it, it deserved it deserved more because that type of stuff is what people were really looking for mm. and i think that a lot of people sifted through the you know the errors or what have you mm -hmm. and saw <laughs> The big picture, picture right. and then some people just turned around and said, "Like, yo, this shit is some bullshit." Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just that's just what happened. You know, right. my my experience, it was it was rough, but it was great. It it made me a lot of who I am today, as far as discipline, as far as um, as far as making making choices, as far as um, just just my heart right. you know what I'm saying because some things some things happen to you and it makes you do like the experience some things happen to you and make you say like hell no I'm gonna do the opposite because mm -hmm. that shit is fucked up right. you know so there was there was a lot of that you know how long were you uh, a part of that lifestyle and how did it affect your music oh music was over with um <laughs> And, and that was that was a decision that I made. Right. Um, so, nineteen, yeah. So nineteen ninety, I would say, or really the latter part of eighty nine was when I really just said like, "Yo, I'm yeah, not doing this no more." Nah, I, I was still doing it yeah. because um, if you if you look at um, my second album on EMI to your soul, you see it's red, black, and green. And if you look on my chest, you see what's known as the flag of the Mahdi, um, which is the um, <clears throat> they say it says you know they say is um, they say that or Dr. York said you know he descended from him and that his family you know and stuff like that. I don't know about that, right. but what I'll say is that's what that's what I. I believed, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? At the time. And I ran, yeah, and I ran with it. And and it helped me. And, and sometimes you gotta look at shit like, damn, you know, whether it was the truth is truth mm -hmm. or the truest truth or some bullshit, you have to look at what did you get from, from it. it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what I look at. You know, and I'm not saying anything to um to be smirch anybody's mm -hmm. name right. you know what i'm saying i'm just telling it like it is i'm fulfilling my promise to myself to tell it like it is and don't be a bullshit artist and don't come on your show with a bunch of gangster shoot 'em up shit mm -hmm. and all this other stuff or you know i climb mount everest and all that other shit. <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> right so there, there was so there was a point when you were on the label when you were a part of this movement and the label heads or whoever started looking at you differently. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Why is that? Because I think um I just started noticing stuff. Um did they start to notice a change in the content oh, yeah, of your def music? Definitely. Yeah. Right. And um, you know, and then A and R's had changed, you know, it was like a they call it a revolving door. A revolving door, yeah that um, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so 
I, I just I just felt the, the difference. And sometimes you feel a difference because it's not necessarily some something that other people are imposing on you. It's kind of what you are imposing on yourself and you just starting to react differently to the same people with the same reactions that they always have. And you have to realize that it's not them changing on you, it's you changing. Change. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, right. Well, so I, I think that was a lot of it. So it wasn't, it wasn't something marketable for them? Oh, definitely not. They right. didn't know how. Definitely because not. Because of the transition from the first album to the second one. Yeah. They wasn't jacking. They was like, we want Yeah. The original Were you still character. hustling? Were you still in the streets or did you put Nah, that down nah, nah. Got, I was over with. Once you got yeah. the deal, that was it. Yeah, yeah. That was it. What and, prompted, sorry, what prompted you to go look for God? I, we hear a lot of stories about hustlers who get to their last leg and, you know what I mean? They, they just go do some any, traumatic shit. And they're looking for redemption. Or, 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 you, or you're just young and there's just so much shit going on around you that you like, what's the meaning yeah, of all this? Because like, that, that's what I'm hearing. You said you got discipline from it, structure from it, but like, what prompted you to go look looking for it in the first place? Because I'm, I'm sort of a geek for knowledge. Hmm. I, I, and it's like, that's one of the, or what I, what I understand to be is, used to be one of the major stumps in life. It's like, who is God? Where is God? Why is God? You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, I don't know if it would be even safe for me to, you know, go into like some of the things, some of, some of the smaller things that I've learned you know, firstly about um, the trick in which a lot of the books of the Bible were adapted from earlier books. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. for instance, like the um, like the like the story of Noah. Noah comes from uh, the Gilgamesh epics. You know, mm -hmm. from ancient Babylon. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, there were there were multiple stories of of the flood throughout different civilizations. Right. 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 So, um, but even even as far as the character, like Noah is um, Utnafishtim in the Gilgamesh epics. Um, you have, uh, of course, you know the 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 revelation story, every culture, and then you have um, you have Jesus who has a similar accounts as Mithra, Hercules, Heru, Horus, Cyrus. which is- Yeah, Horus. Os yeah, yeah. Um, and it goes on and on. And it's a pantheon. Um, what, what they say in Islam, when they talk about Allah and the angelic beings, they say Allahumma, right? Um, in English, of course, they say God and his um, angels, but they the same. They have the same names. Mm -hmm. So which one is which? Or uh, is God and Allah the same thing? Is Islam um, more right. Christian it's, than they given? You know. And then Elo what is a, Elohim? Elo, the right. Powers Elohim. And God Elohim, powers and the you right. know, all that stuff. So basically, put simply, is like who who is who is God? And what, what I found is God is, is you. And it's, it, it's not that mind blowing because everything mm -hmm. is what it is to you. Hmm. Because without you, it wouldn't exist. And that's um, Kalimatullah, right? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahtahu la sharika lahu. But it, it goes, I went on, but it's um, nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it. He is alone. No partners has he. So everything, they just not telling you that that he, whether you want to say he or she, or, you know, is you. It's within yourself. It's you. Not within, without, is you, period. So being Whatever selfish you, ain't so bad. Huh? So being selfish ain't so bad. Nah, it's not. <laughs> and, good, and good and bad is good and bad is all perspective. Yeah. If, mm -hmm. if you're trying yes. to paint the world blue and I'm trying to paint the world red, we become each other's devil. 
Mm. Mm. So what's the difference between, you know, but then they say Satan. But if you go into Satan, what you find mm. out is, is demons. And demons in um, ancient Kemet was known as, um, is, is a part of the um, micro, microscopic universe. It has nothing to do with good or evil. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it, it's just... It's, so you learn to unlearn. Yeah. And yeah, a lot you of had stuff to. you were told. And, and, and Satan translated as, as adversary. Right. Right. So it's, it's anybody could be your Satan, you know? Right. right? But not so much Satan, mm -hmm. but it's, it's important to say devil or diabolos because Satan is Saturn. Satan is Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's all astrological, mm -hmm. uh, astronomical. It's is the redeemer and they took they took or they took um planet bodies and spatial bodies and the events that went with them to explain and then they eventually personified right. these and, things and turned it into something else turn it into a like drama one, story. Monday's really moon day moon day and look right. what it is in um Monday in, in Spanish, which has connections with lunes. um Soretic lunes, yeah. right? Right. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, martes, martes. Mars. Hmm. Wednesday, miércoles. Wednesday, miércoles, Mercury. Mm -hmm. Mercury. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, the only one is different. Um, Thursday, is um is jueves, but that's um Thor. From Thursday, from Thor. Mm -hmm. Friday, Venus, Venus. Mm -hmm. Sábado. Sábado. Mm -hmm. Domingo. So during this time that you're, you're, you're gaining all this knowledge and you're changing your life, what's happening with the people around you? What are they seeing? Are people adapting to it or people rejecting it? Or people like, you tripping, man, you about to fuck, the, fuck up the bag? Like, yeah. what's going on? Um, I didn't really feel the brunt of too much of that because it was me who separated from the people Right. who um, who we all were in a similar path. And then I took another path and I separated from them. Right. So at the time, you, you have this young artist that's with you. Mm hmm You start to change your life. What happened to that relationship? Oh, he rolled with me because he didn't give a fuck what I thought. He was like, this nigga got a deal. We going on tour, we rhyming, you know what I'm saying? He ain't give a fuck. And, and to be honest with you, I got to tell this story that before, like, we had just come back from London and, you know, we were doing, uh, we were going to different markets doing radio. And actually, we want, I, I was on tour. We, we, we started the tour and, you know, I wasn't. I wasn't a Muslim, I wasn't an Ansar, I was none of that. But I did, I was going um, to mass chids and stuff like that with this woman from London whose name is June. And she recommended that I buy some books like, you know, the five pillars of Islam just to learn the basics. Right. So I came back with that mentality and, um, but not fully because, you know, we, we came downstairs one time to, um, to have breakfast in, in this hotel. So we were eating breakfast and I ordered bacon. Mm -hmm. and, and Jay, you know, Jay, um, a lot of his people, you know, they have 5% yeah. background. So right. he was like, yo, man, why you keep eating that swine? Like you, you know, you this, this, that, and all that. I was like, man, I eat what I want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The fucking this pork shit bacon. Tastes good. Hell yeah. <laughs> and pork bacon is delicious, man. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so we're laughing at uh, sin. <laughs> so <laughs> to some people. Right. right. So so I basically, you know, eventually, you know, I saw he he's the one that really like, yo, man, you should stop eating pork, man. And and it really personified when I did the Hawaiian Sophie video, if y'all looked at it, there was a part where we had a big ass hog on a rotisserie and mm -hmm. we were looking at it and Jay was like, and I was like, yeah, that was the point. Yeah, That was, <laughs> that was the, point. the point, I stopped eating pork. Pork, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Wow. wow. Yep. The student becomes a teacher. All the time. But, awesome. you know. But I could imagine that y'all used to exchange knowledge all the time. Um, we, You're learning new things. He's learning new things. Um, you have these conversations. Now, we didn't have those kind of conversations. We, we had conversations like rhyming and who's, who's good, who's better, like other rappers. We used to, honestly, we used to laugh at like at least 90% of the people who made records. Man, we used to be like, That's yeah, at least 90%. <laughs> like, you hear this, you hear this nigga? <laughs> it's like, I mean, and I, and I don't want to put names out there because I don't, you know, I don't want to get nobody no problems right. and they don't want my problem. And so I basically, you know, we basically used to be like, yo, I can't believe this nigga makes records. Like who allows this <laughs> motherfucker to make a record, <laughs> you know? You know, some like male and female, you know, mm-hmm. and but we were just like that because you were so we, intricate. We were, yeah, we were so involved with that shit. Like Talent. everything was like had to be concise. Everything that we did it had to be, you know, and it wasn't like, you know, we were like Allen Iverson, like practice. We weren't practicing. We were honing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we were, we were like, um. How they said, uh, what's his name? How they said Miles Davis was with his trumpet. Like he was so good that he would drive himself, he practically drove himself crazy um, experimenting and doing new things because he was almost bored with yeah. his stellar talent right. and ability to and do mastery. things. He yeah. became bored. He's like, yo, I'm next step, next step, next step. Yeah. And that, that, was, that was us. And that's kind of what gave birth to the triplet style eventually and um and, and other things. So yeah, we, we didn't have too many like uh philosophical conversations. It was more like, yo, how to get on, whether it be rhyming, you know, the tour, um, you know, eventually, you know, the work and but not much on the work. You know, because I was like a, I was kind of independent with that. And it just so happened that they were with me. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, and and I wasn't doing it on a large level. I was doing it like, you know, just to always have money. I wasn't enterprising. You know what I'm saying? Because I felt, and I think that's kind of why, you know, it didn't, it wasn't really successful for me in that manner because I really didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. But it was like shit. You know, I ain't want to work for somebody else. And, you know, I I didn't, you know, of course I had to feed myself, you know. I mean, ever since I was, ever since I was like 14, like nobody could tell me I wasn't a man. So, you know, and I'm sure that happened to all of us, us. you know, at some point. Right, to like beat us the fuck up. It's like, what what do you mean I gotta be in at 12, mom? (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you yep. serious right now? Exactly. Yep. So, yeah. All so, right. So from there, um, before we before we take, it, how did you feel when you heard other people using that style? Um, or emulating it? Or dice yeah. effects? Yeah. Twister. Right. I, I mean. I got, yeah, so I felt it was flattering, but it was um, it was a little disheartening because in all reality, EMI wasn't great at marketing rap. Mm-hmm. I was the first one and all of my stuff went through the urban music, which is vast, the urban music channel. You know what I'm saying? So that was with the OJs and um, Najee. Y'all remember Najee, yeah, the, the yeah. sax player? Yeah. Right. So my music is being promoted with that. Like, so it was that. And the label, you know, um, Warner had already gotten their feet wet when they acquired uh, Tommy Boy. 
you know, because then they had um, De La Soul, mm. you know what I'm saying? Um, and a couple of other groups. Mm. So I felt, I felt slighted, you know, and I didn't feel slighted like they were doing it. I felt slighted that EMI didn't do enough to make me the, the poster child, if you will, for the triplet style. Mm. which I was supposed to be and which, um, you know, everything comes full circle. But I applaud all of those artists. I applaud Das FX. Uh, Foo Snickers. Yeah, Chip Twister. Foo in particular. Yeah, yeah. You know, Foo. shout out to Chip Foo. All right. Um, Twister. Twister. Twister's nasty. Bone Thugs. Bone Thugs. All of Bone those. thugs yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they at least pay homage? Uh, I, I, and that's, some that's, of them probably don't even know where it came from. They all do. They all do. Especially they after G's. He yeah, said like, the originated and ungraded jazz and invented the shit. They, they all do the pro. Oh, and let me not um, forget um, Crucial Conflict. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Crucial Chicago, Conflict, yeah. my man Wild Style. Shout out to him. Right. Um, yeah, y'all better give me some money. I'm mentioning y'all. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck all that homeboy shit. Give me some money. You know what I'm saying? Talk that Brooklyn shit. I just made I just made y'all some bread. Y'all next show might have a whole other zero to it. <laughs> so let's go. We're gonna take a five minute break. <laughs> I wanna the chain was for artists. Or people, any anybody, yeah, artistically involved, or creatively involved doubt. with the reasonable doubt, right. they turn into like a fucking circus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's a story behind that where I almost, almost didn't get it after I actually wanted it. Why because, is that? Because um, I call I call Lenny S. And I was like, yo, I heard about this um, Rockefeller piece. And he was like, you ain't get yours yet? I was like, nah. I was like, I'm going to be truthful. I said, I ain't even want it till somebody told me about it. I said, but now I want it. <laughs> and he was like, all right, all right, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to call, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. So I wait a week. I call him, call him back. I was like, yo, ain't nobody called me about nothing. And he was like... They messing up. Let me call this and stand on it. No. Still nothing. So it was, it was almost like a month. Because I'm like, I ain't going to keep calling this man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like out of respect for myself more than anybody right. else. And um, so I called him one last time. And I was like, yo, man, I ain't get it. <coughs> and he was like, yo, I ain't talking to nobody. Nothing. I was like, what's going on? Then he told me a story about, he was like, Jay came up to the... Uh, Jay came up to Rock Nation, and, he, and um, there were like three or four of them in the safe, and he took them out because I guess he had an inclination that people were misusing their privileges and just handing them out here, 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 here. I know you here, so he took them out, and um, so what happened was I told um, I told Jay about it, and then Lenny said that he was going to tell him too. So what happened was um, me and Jay communicated via email and he asked for my address. So he sent it to me himself. It's probably the only way I was going to get it. <laughs> mm, wow. Man. But, at, okay, so let's rewind time a little bit. Because you still wear it to this day. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has had some sort of sentimental value, being that you, you saw this man. Mm -hmm. From at a young point, at a, a you know the time in his life where he was still developing who he was, mm -hmm. you were imp you were a big part of his exposure to hip hop. Being that you got a deal, and you took him to London, and mm -hmm. at what point did you start to see the shift? where he started to come into his own? Um, when he started making uh, business decisions as far as like incorporating Damon into his, uh, his business, if you will, 
um, you know, just basically setting up shop as far as like his legal team and things of that nature. Um, his, um, his rapport with um, people at Def Jam, you know, namely Lior, you know, so that's that's kind of when I saw it, and you know he he seized the opportunity because before um, Rockefeller or Jay or Dame was doing anything up at Def Jam, Irv Gotti was up there with this little you know the school desk. You got the thing come out yeah. like that. He had a little school desk in front of somebody's office. And he said Leo let him, you know, stay up there and, you know, use the phone and shit like that. Cause you know, Irv, if he can't do nothing else, he he could talk. So he talked his way into, basically, you know, getting being being able to be at that spot, like that. And then sometimes, sometimes they would move that that little desk. And he would get upset, you know, like he ain't got a place there no you're, more. You're being, you're being literal. Yeah. Like he literally had a school desk. Yeah. Sitting out outside of Leo Korn's office. I don't know if it was Leo's office, but it was somebody's office. Somebody's office. He was right there. Wow. Dead ass. Wow. I don't, I don't, yeah. But I don't know. See, my thing, I don't know why niggas don't talk about that. You know, mm-hmm. you want to talk about your high and mighty shit, about the but process. your high and mighty shit, yeah, is no that's not, that's right. Not there's the a road. Part. There's a road to that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They only, they only want to talk about the highlights. Exactly. Not that you couldn't show Irv Gotti's dedication. The fact that he was because somebody's gonna sit out there. Yo, I want to play myself sitting out there. I ain't trying to play myself sitting in this little. Yeah, desk. but if, if sitting right. outside that office and that little desk led to. The success the that they is today. Now, they only that, why, DJ that, that played a part. Yeah. One, there's no guarantee that that's gonna happen. You're right, though. No, no in his guarantee. in his case, and hit no. But I'm I'm just talking about the person who's watching. People want to show the end result because they feel like that's the inspiration. But it's really it's really give and take. If I'm inspiring somebody who's at who's like at their lowest point or at the bottom, and I'm showing them heights, that may not do it. If I show them. This is what my day one looked like. This is what the mud looked like. When I say I got it out the mud, here's what it looked like. I was in a little desk, this multi-million dollar company sitting outside of somebody else's shit trying to get my shit off at this little school desk. This is what the bottom... Somebody else may get inspired by that, but we're so mesmerized by the glitz. Most people don't want to see the struggle. They just want to see the end result. True story. Yeah, and and nothing happens overnight. Ever. And then there's the ego. Yes. The ego. It's the The ego. ego. Nobody wants to be seen as a humble, you know, like you said, you know, getting it out the mud, so on and so forth, because that's been programmed into us that 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 is not a desirable look. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So tell us more about this little school desk that Earth got here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know about it. And he was he was at it and he would go in he would go in this, into offices and use the phone. And he obviously utilized it properly because um as as far as everything that I've heard, like he was the one that really connected, you know, Jay and Dane with Def Jam and kind of begat that whole relationship that, you know, created the distribution. Right. Did you want to be a part of that structure when you saw Jay setting up shop with Biggs and and Dame? Did you did you want to be involved in that? I mean, of course he did. No, nah, of course I didn't. he did. No. I'm sorry. Did you did you not produce um Ain't No Nigga? Yeah, but I was mm. where that's where I wanted to be, yes. But I didn't want to be I, I didn't I saw it as like like I don't go, I don't go places where I'm not invited. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if you saying that this is my lane, and you come at me when, or you 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 know what I'm saying, you contact me when some something like this is going on, 
then I, I'll play that lane because I'm good with that. But if somebody outside of that say like, yo, you need to present yourself this way so that you can do that, I don't choose that because I'm not invited. That means I'll be somewhere where I'm not, I'm not wanted. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or they feel that I'm not. And, and the funny part about it is they know knowledge wise that I was equipped more than everybody else besides, you know, whatever, um, whatever else they do or did to, to go on in business to, to create new avenues and cr to create revenue and creatively just originate some other shit. Right. They knew that. You know what I'm saying? And I don't even say new. They know that. But, you know, um, I'm, and I mean it's human nature. Like, a lot of times people want things for themselves. We all want shit for ourselves. So I understood. And a lot of times um, where Jay thought I was being standoffish and stuff like that, I was like, nah. Like, nigga, I was just not letting you, but I was seeing making sure on my part that you breathe because nobody else is going to do it as far as I'm looking. Nobody else is going to let you breathe. They're going to want to be a part of what you're doing mm. for their benefit, right. not to boost you up. So I just, I just backed off and I was like, yo, when I'm, when I'm around, I'm around. When I'm not, I'm not. Don't think I'm just twiddling my thumbs and shit right. like that when I'm not, though. But what did it get in? Was that um, interpreted as you kind of like like not like i'm not fucking with niggas yeah. yeah it could have it could have but that's that wasn't my problem you know what i'm saying my my whole thing was i felt like um and and i seriously feel like this i felt like niggas was supposed to embrace me and be like you know, not like exalt me or anything, right. but they were supposed to embrace me and not involve me as far as like, okay, when we when we find something creative that we can't do, we're gonna call you outside of that, go fuck yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's how I kind of felt. But I didn't take offense to it. I'm just like, shit, people have, they have their own reasons for doing whatever they doing. You know, and then I'm saying this and then they might, um, they might have had totally different feelings, but that's how I took it. But I didn't take offense to it. I just said like, yo, you know, um, this, ain't, this ain't my lane. This is not why I got into this from the beginning. You know, I mean, I ain't, I ain't fucking crazy. You know, if money is laying on the table and they saying I can get it, I'm gonna go after it. But at the same time, I'm not I'm not gonna be hanging around somewhere I'm not invited. Mm. You know, I don't I you know, I've been, you know, I've I've been uh, accused of things, you know, when I wasn't guilty of them. Um like what? All right. See I segued you again. <laughs> uh, so like when um when Nas did Ether. Mm-hmm. They started insinuating that I gave Nas information. And I'm like, why would I do that? Yeah. I'm not, not, I'm not, not saying not, who. If you, if you couple that with uh, your standoffishness mm -hmm. and people feeling like, all right, um, you know, I followed you around. Mm -hmm. When when you was up, mm -hmm. now I'm up. And you acting funny. You 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 you're giving Stand them off. the breathing room, you but it's funny. coming across like you I ain't gonna do that for you, right? And in an area of where, you know, it, I guess during that time, it could be really hard to tell who's who, right? Right. Because well, you know you're, you're, you're on time. you're on top of your game. Mm -hmm. Then you get hit with a one-two, and it's like, oh shit! Mm -hmm. Wait, who's with me? Right. You know what I mean? So I could see how it would be easy to inject that type of mm -hmm. of of ideal, like yo, he might have been the one 
because if you put those pieces together from the outside looking in, mm-hmm. they would probably assume like, yeah, he he not really rocking with you. He like knows that. me the most, and now he's acting funny, and now this shit happens. Right. And then not only that, you know, your name was implicated like three times in that record. It was just like your name just kept. Yeah, it just kept, kept ringing. Like wow, like why? You I keep mean, saying- uh, as far as you know, on on Nas's standpoint, divide and conquer. That's that's a it's a yeah. great move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. So that, I say, is very reasonable for somebody to think that way. The only difference was me being standoffish wasn't being that I wasn't around. It wasn't being that I wasn't, um, I didn't make myself available to, to anybody, you know, because at one time we managed, me and Beehive, his cousin, man, we managed Bleak. Mm. And we were trying to get deals and we felt like... Um, you know, we felt like there were things going on that um, kind of hindered us from getting a major deal for Bleak. Um, my, my assessment of all of that, it could be reasonable, but at the same time, there were so many situations where I made myself available and different things happened. So I, I wasn't standoffish because of that. Which I'm, I know you saying you hearing me say it, right? And how they assess it could be totally different, and I get that. I agree with that a hundred percent. But to to my point is that there were other things and tangibles that I did that was known that would um, sort of like um, kind of x that out, right? Mm. Was there was there, um, there a reason why you turned down uh, the deal with Dane? Yeah, because it wasn't fair. Okay. It wasn't fair, and they try to make me look like I wasn't with them. And, you know, the mentality or the idea I was starting to get, and I'm not saying whether it was from Jay or whether it was from Dane, but the idea I was getting from that entity was the fact that um, Y'all expect me to be doing shit for the super low discount or for free because we're family. But families eat. You know what I'm saying? Right. Families eat. And if you eating, then let me eat too. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't short me and, and try to say, like, you know, my my production is, you know, all he's doing is this and all. Yeah, but you calling me. I don't call y'all. You call me when you need something. Right. So that's so I, I I didn't take it like cold heartedly, but I took it for what it was, and I'm like, everything is everything. You know, I got love for everybody, but please understand, like I ain't nobody's fucking, I ain't nobody's lackey, you know. And maybe that could be a little bit of my own ego right. kicking in. Right. You know what I'm saying? But shit, everybody got one. Let me use mine too. This kind of <laughs> feels like a combination of ego, miscommunication, you know. I'm not gonna call first. Let him call first. I ain't calling first. Let him call first. It just it, yeah. And yeah. it sounds like if I'm somebody the big bro. <laughs> if somebody would have just picked the phone up and mm-hmm. been like, bro, I'm not stepping away from you because you up. I'm giving you space to let you rock. Well, bro, I don't need you giving me space. Are you kidding me? Like this is the busiest time ever. I need you over here. Like why aren't you here? Cause I don't want to look like. I'm running behind you. That looks crazy. Dog, nobody's going to think that. You my man. You, you, you know nah. me since I was little. Like, nobody's going to think that. Come right. on, man. Get your ass in the car and get over here. I need you. Right. Nah, but I, but, that looks crazy. But I never thought that. I never thought that it would be beneath me to run behind him. You know what I'm saying? It, it, never, it never even occurred to me. I mean, we did... Um, I, was, I was doing spotted dates for the... Um, what is it, the um, Hard Knock Life Tour? Mm. It wasn't because um, I didn't want to be there. It was because you didn't give me a contract. You know, Mm -hmm. Snoop was getting on stage. I bet Snoop had a contract. Um, Jermaine Dupri was getting on stage. I bet Jermaine Dupri had a contract. Because I'm family, I'm just supposed to ride out. It's mm-hmm. like, and to me that wasn't fair. And and in 
in Jay's defense, I don't even know if he even knew about that. But if he doesn't, um, if he doesn't mention anything, um, who else is gonna mention something? Okay. They're not gonna jump out the window and say like, did, "Oh, did you ever go to him?" Like, "Yo, I need a contract." No, nah. because not? because I was good. I was good with coming on a, a show date, and when I chose to to leave. You know, or stay on for two or three dates, because half of the half of the dates that I went on, I had you know I had my own car with me. I had my truck, so I would ride that way, and that was that was the thing. And I and and it was just a lot of things. The second part, you know, I didn't smoke weed. I didn't want to ride on a bus with weed in my clothes. I'm just saying, we you know getting the contact. You know, it was just different things. Mm-hmm. And I was, on, and, and to be real, like, I was only on one song. One song that he was actually doing during, you know, during his his set. Right. So I just looked at it like, damn, all right. And again, in his defense, I got to say this. When all of that shit is happening, Sometimes it's too much. It's just too much shit going on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's it's not purpose. What? Yeah, it's not on where, purpose. It's right. Just, where yo. niggas like, yo man, just yo ask somebody, yo do this or something like that. You know, sometimes niggas don't want to say, yo I'm doing too much or, or whatever, you know. And it's easy. You know, I could have I could have taken offense on many occasions, whether it was intended to be offensive or not. Right. But I, I didn't. You know what I'm saying? And um of course, you know, I had a gang of motherfuckers trying to put a battery in my back. Mm-hmm. Oh that nigga do 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 this that. It's like, come on, man. It's like, if he is, then what? I'm supposed to go in the corner and pout or um or reach out to him. And I mean, and then there's then there's the part where um where I couldn't even get in touch with the nigga, you know. So there's that part. How so, how was, how does that happen? You gotta ask him. And again, I'm not I'm not throwing rocks. I'm just saying there was a time I could I couldn't even get in touch with him. And in all seriousness, I felt like it was justified if I if there was something that I had, that I felt I had to say or something pertinent to what's going on. His career is his career. His career ain't his career (laughs) and making sure jazz is good. Right. Jazz makes sure jazz is good, you know? And, you know, we helped each other along the way. Whatever it was that we could do, you know, we helped each other. But at a point, you know, it just was what it was. I I have a thought. You taught him every, uh, uh, we all together. If I don't get in, if y'all can't get in, I'm not going in. Mm -hmm. Here he is starting this big situation. And you're distancing yourself. But you begin, you can't say it started there. No, 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 no. But be clear. I didn't distance myself. I just didn't. If if somebody's not if somebody knows I'm at the door they're not opening the door I'm not walking in. What well, my pops used to say when the results don't change the why is irrelevant. I understand why you did what you did. Mm-hmm. The result is still you're on the other side of the door and we're all over here. That's a fact, right? So I'm not I'm not questioning your motives or mm-hmm. your integrity or none of that. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is you have the philosophy that if I don't get in if y'all can't get in I'm not going. Mm-hmm. If Jay saw that with you coming up, and now this situation is happening, and you're creating distance between yourself and him for whatever reason, mm-hmm. as noble as the reason could be, he could see that as you not being the guy who raised him. No, nah, I was. Yeah, yeah that, because that, he we, came. You know, we kind of made that point. He rolled with you with no contract. Snoop, get on stage. You got a contract. Jermaine Dupree, get on stage. You got. A, when Jay was with you, he didn't have a contract. He didn't need one to be your guy. Right. And rock with you. So right. maybe in his mind, yo, just be here. Yeah. 
Just yeah. be here. It, it sound, it, it sound, and, I, and again, like I'm not mentioning any of this stuff like the, the tallest blame because no, no, I'm, no, we're I'm, just I'm, looking back at it. right. We're I'm responsible for my own station in life, just like everybody. Right. I'm just saying that that is what I did, regardless of how anybody, because I didn't. I'm not laying fault on him right. about anything. I'm just saying the fact that that's what it made me feel. But I didn't, you know, I wasn't butt hurt and shit like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't on some pouting and like, yo, he, you know, like I needed, I don't need attention. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, I do. And that's for me to pay attention to myself. You know, outside of that, you know, I could get it or I could not get it. So, you know, a lot, and the shit could go a lot of different ways. There were a lot of pieces that, like, we would need, like, seven interviews to <laughs> go into. It's just crazy. Like, you know, you had people, and I mean, just to make, to, to generalize it, you know, he had people in his ear. Mm. There were, like, three different situations that come up where, you know, the he said, she said, and, you know, I put people on notice. You know what I'm saying? So, they, How do you they, mean? You put people on notice. How do you mean? I put them on notice because I would be asked a question and I give it to them how it how it went down. And, you know, I would be asked like, yeah, so I'm gonna call such and such on the phone. And I'm I'm gonna tell them that this is what you said and this is what happened. I'm like, go ahead. Because that's what happened. Mm-hmm. You know, and I always made it a point, like anything I tell you about somebody, I tell them to their face. face. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? It ain't a thing. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to play, I'm not a gangster, but I'm gangster. You know, if I don't have to be, then there's no point, you know, no need talking like that and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. But the reality is, like, just out of respect for myself and respect for others, you know, I'm gonna keep it 100. I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you this is what happened. You know, they asked why I said something. I was like, cuz shit ain't right. Because things are happening because people were misunderstanding each other. And you know what kind of shit that could lead to. So, um, again, my, my, main, my main thing was I stood back. And then, I, I, you know, I, I told him about this stuff. So, it's not like I did it and then... Um, you know, he had to suffer the the whole situation or I had to suffer the situation via acquiescence. I said something. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So that was, that was mm-hmm. basically it. Right, let, let, let's, let's put that to a rest for a second. Tell me about creating. Nah, because. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about creating the records, mainly um, Ain't No Nigga and mm-hmm. The Originators. Um, ain't no nigga happened. Um, Jay had the concept and we, he told me that he went to, um, two other producers to, um, put it together. And he said he wasn't satisfied with the result. He said he came to me cause he know that I could do it, you know, um, so I did it, and the way I put it together was I was in D&D Studios, and, um, you know, I was finding my drums that fit, you know, the, um, you know, the, the basic texture of the snare and the kick mm. on Seven Minutes of Funk. And, um, you know, I found some, but when I put it together, I noticed how the part that I really wanted the BPMs on this in the sample, it just sped up drastically from the beginning to like the second, third bar. Mm. So I was like, damn. Mm. And so, and I always give credit where credit is due. It was an engineer in D and D that engineered like most of all of my stuff that um, I did out of D and D. Um, his name is Kieran Walsh, and um, he was like. Yo, the, the drums, 
in the sample, they sound pretty strong. He was like, I can EQ it to where you don't have to put drums on top of it. That's how, I, so it sounds yeah. so clean. So it ain't no drums on top of it. It's just the Ooh. sample. So what I did, and then I was like, but the timing is so crazy. I try to put it in a sequence. And you know, the sequence is mechanical. So, so one to two and two to three is gonna be the exact same time. Yeah, yeah right. But with live music, you know, it's gonna be different. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I chopped up the pieces that I wanted and you know, I did bump, ba bum bum bump, ba bum ba bum ba bum bum ba ba da dish da da dish da bum 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 ba bum ba bum ba bum 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 bum. Get a champ. I was waiting for that. No, no, I did that. I'm watching the master at his crab. I did that for five. I did that for like five minutes, live on um on recorded onto two inch reel. So that's that's how that happened. And when the record was put together and it was released, you shoot the video. Mm -hmm. That's you in the video standing next to Shorty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. How did it feel to, um, to once make him a part of something that, that brought you success and now you're, you're kind of returning to fate? Yeah, it felt great. It felt great. Um, you know, and I was, I was happy to know that, um, you know, not just him, but, but just vindication in a way, mm -hmm. you know, like, okay, all right, so I'm, I'm invited, you know, and that, and that could all be my ego. I, you know, guilty as charged, you know what I'm saying? But fuck it, you know, that's, that's, that's what it is. Right. And, um. You know, so I felt vindicated and I was like, yeah, I, that makes me happy. Like if y'all, y'all feel for whatever reason, if it's because like, well, nigga, you are, you are singing on the hook and you did produce it, which that could go in either way. Right. But um, just gratified that, that I was there, you know, not a camper, like happy to be there, but mm -hmm. validated. Contributing. Right. Yeah, validated because that's that's all yeah. I that's all I ever wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Is yeah. is help? You know what I'm saying? And help under under circumstances. I gotta help myself too, because I'm I'm an idiot if I'm just helping, helping, helping. And I ain't helping myself. The sunshine, the sun um, nourishes the planet, but the sun eats. If the sun don't eat, it dies out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know so that? so so you did. Ain't no nigga on Reasonable Doubt, mm -hmm. the first album. Fast forward, you get volume one, Jay-Z went super commercial, Biggie just passed away, he went tap puff, to exec executive produced that, but then volume two comes around. Mm -hmm. And Jay hits, does Jay hit you up about nigga what, nigga who? Like, how did that happen? Um, I was in I was in D&D &D and I finished recording doing some recording for um, um, this, this group called The Council. Mm. Um, and I got a call from Beehive. And Beehive was like, yo, Jay in the studio, um, he wants you to come through and um, you know, do something. And I was like, what? And he was like, yo, I don't know. <laughs> he was like, he's so I can come through. And you know, so my ego kicked in. I ain't gonna front. <laughs> but this is the invitation. The door, I thought you was invited, bro. Nah, that's not an invite. That's like, yo, nigga. Like a summons. Yeah. Like a summons. But yeah. it's not that, but uh, we grown that, that was come that on, was don't front. Uh, don't front. You get approached with the same thing. Not saying that that's your final decision. But that shit runs through your head. I've I've been approached with that, but I, I always took it as the person calling wants me around. Really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. You hit no, me, you but hit me I, I'm not saying you hit me because you want me there for to contribute oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. about whatever, but still yeah, but, yeah, stuff. but you're not not letting me finish. I'm saying the first thing that popped in my head is like you asking me. You asking me to come somewhere and you're not giving me any information, just come. Like, that could be beef. 
that could be anything. Like right. I want to know what's going on, so I'm I'm prepared in that aspect. And then the other side is like, nigga, I'm a grown ass man. Like explain to me what the fuck is going on, and not even on no bra bra shit, but just on some like then. Like so, I asked B how I was like, why? He was like, I don't know. He's like, it's come through, but my the end result it wasn't my ego. It's just like yo, I came through. So I went and um. Uh, my man at the time, this kid DiBiase, um, he came. He came with me, and they were recording. Um, I forgot the name of the studios in the. Um, is that the Ham Hammerstein Ballroom, Thirty Fourth Street, Eighth mm -hmm. Avenue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a studio in there. I Upstairs. forgot. The, yeah, forgot yes. the name of the studio, and um, so I came and. He was telling me like, yo, yeah, so we got this beat, right? So Tim was there, Timberland, and um, he was like, got this beat, right? And um, I'm rhyming, right? And then I'm gonna say something like, um, the originator, none greater jazz, or finish the shit, and then you go. So I was like, all right, bet. So I was looking for something, and you know, Niggas was writing on something. You know, everybody wasn't all, oh, oh, I'm going off the top of my head, this, that, and other. <laughs> right, Niggas right. was writing, writing on that. something. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, so I found like the little um, little postcard that was just one sided, so the other side was clear I could write on. So I was writing in teeny tiny letters and I wrote I wrote the verse that you hear today. And mm. so um, and this is this is a true story. I, um, as opposed to the other ones, right? This is why I, just said it. <laughs> I don't know why people say that. I don't know why I just said it. You know what I'm saying? All the other shit was live. Right right it's right here. It's a lie. This is the true story. This is the truth right here. Yeah, here comes the true one. You know what I'm saying? So, but basically, um, I got to a point and I was like, man. Because see, and that's the thing about ego. Ego is something that you must contend with because if you if you dismiss it you lose yourself if you fall victim to it you lose everyone around you right and you 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 still lose yourself you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so you have to balance it and there's nothing wrong with exercising ego but it's it's about not becoming an ego maniac it's not becoming hyper ego mm -hmm. so it, I got to a point, I was like, damn, yo, man, I'm at the end of the song. Yo, this the shit they used to do to me in D&D. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, while I'm, while I'm at the end of the song, man, like DJ, <laughs> like D, the DJ, the DJ crazy. might not play that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I got to go extra hard. He going to clip, yeah. clip it after the second verse. You know he ain't going to play the whole day. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the club. You know what I'm saying? They're going to keep running back the first verse, the first verse. And then I'm just obscure so I just, <laughs> I'm just done uh, I ain't gonna so, lie they used to play that record all the, all the way, way through, through. all the way through, all all way through. Record that play on the all radio through. everything and, and it's a must right. it's, it's a must I gotta admit that that's my ego talking but that's cool you know right um, so, so did you campaign to go earlier in the song nah what I did was and that's kind of that's kind of me that's a me thing that's kind of the way that I handle things sometimes like I don't really like confrontation because people don't like me when I'm confrontational. Like I'm when I'm confrontational, I'm confrontational times ten. But so I don't so I avoid confrontation because I get right to the facts. And I'll be like, well, this is this, and my choice is this, and you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So um so I got to a point, I was like, hey, you know what? In my head now, I'm not getting at nobody, I'm not changing my, you know, my body language. In my mind, I was like, man, fuck this shit, man. You put me at the end of no fucking show. <laughs> you know, I come up here, 
This nigga asked <laughs> nigga damn near nigga damn near commanded me to come up here and shit. I mean, I, but that's that's you know, sometimes your ego that's terrible, bro. It's you not, never dealt no, with no, that. No, it, it's terrible, terrible seeing the end result now. And it's terrible it hearing is. somebody tell the truth about it. Word. No I, matter how I'm you feel about it, that's not, that's what it is. I'm I live not with judging it. Judging anybody's truth. You bro. did. You said I'm it's not. terrible. That's I a said, judgment. No, that that, that, <laughs> that that is that not a judgment? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not judging. I'm not judging you. That train of thought is terrible. Like that, the idea that these people invited you up here to sun you. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, that's right. A, that's a bad idea. That's nah, a terrible but, thought. But this is this is one of uh, maybe like. 500 thoughts that fly through I'm, my head. And again, right. this is why I'm, I'm not knocking you for having them. I'm not, not saying no, you're a terrible you, person. For having them. <laughs> and no, champ, I don't do, I don't do, I don't do shit like no, that. No, I didn't say you do shit like that. I've said you never went through that. I mean, you wasn't always as knowledgeable as you are, are now. At some point at your younger in your younger years or something, you went through something. Somebody may have summoned you to something. You're like, man, I want to fucking go. That's why. No, no, even if, if, if I didn't want to go, I just didn't go. However, if there was an opportunity for me to do something, then I went. If I wasn't already booked, I just went. And then whatever happens, happens. But I, I, I'm not, I, I never, I tried to stay away from, I'm at a place where you can't, yeah, I, I tried to take my ego out of it all the time. Because that, that never worked out for me. Just straight up. No, my, I get my it. My ego involved in something never worked out. I get it. But I think, I think it's due to mm. misinterpretation of ego. Because ego... Everybody has one. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Um, some people let their egos breathe a little bit too much. Mine, I would say, and maybe this is my ego even saying this, my <laughs> ego, my ego <laughs> is, is more balanced. You know what I'm saying? You have, to, you, have to, you have to make your ego serve your purpose as mm -hmm. opposed to becoming an egomaniac and just because I feel like doing something, I'm just going to do it because it you can't do that to me because I'm me and you know yeah, start beating your chest, chest and all, all that, that shit. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I know because yeah. yeah, it's real, right? No, nah, no, nah, it's real. It's real. So it there's a lot of situations I look back at like, damn, I kind of took that the wrong way. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. Yeah. I kind of took that in a way where it was a blessing, mm -hmm. but because it wasn't the way that I wanted it. Mm -hmm. I might have, you know what I mean? I might have spit the, on the blessing. You don't get the control. But it was a blessing. Looking back in hindsight. Why not? Right. It was a blessing. Mm -hmm. Why like not? It didn't happen. You know? because, I'm sorry, because, I didn't mean to. Yeah. Because it may, it may show up in a box you weren't expecting, but it's still success. You may actually be happier with this one, but you weren't married. If you're not married to the idea mm -hmm. of what your success must look like. Right. Which is my, when I'm consulting artists. Stop getting married to the idea that it has to happen this way, this way, this way, and this way. Because if it ends up going that way, maybe that's your path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it'll be dope when it's all said and done. But because you're so stuck on, nah, I need to be signed like this, and I got to be here, and I got to be in this place, and it needs to look like that. And this person needs to and I gotta go that first way. on the right. I gotta go first. <laughs> I gotta right. go first. <laughs> and then when those so, things don't happen. Actually, I wanted to go second. You wanted to go second. Yeah. Second verse, but I, but yeah, if it doesn't happen that way, when those things but, don't happen now, but it's now two you, sides to now that. You be, I'm, ne I'm never shitting on it, but all I'm saying is, yeah, nah, you, you have a very valid point, but what I'm saying is, again, you cut me off in the middle of it. I'm My saying bad. that no, there ain't no bad. It's you good. Um, you got a great point. I'm just saying that these were some of the things that went through my mind mm -hmm. as who I feel I am as an artist, as um, as a person, you know, it's like I already, um, I already can't, but see, this is the thing too. Jay knew that, Jay knew how I am. Mm -hmm. He knows how I was in that circumstance. So automatically he was expecting me there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying that in the midst of writing it, I'm like, yo, man, the fuck am I here for, man? Be at the end of the song, this, that, and the other. And it was DiBiase 
who said, like, yo, man. And he, he literally said this shit. He said, yo, niggas are cut off they right arm to get on a song with this nigga right now. Mm. Which goes to your point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, cut your blessing. Yeah. And he was like, regardless of how you feel about how you got here and this, that, and the other, he was like, yo, just just do it. It's, it's bigger than what you think. He was like, do it. And now that, that was the that was the best shit that nigga ever said to me. Mm. You know. <laughs> and not and it ain't it ain't even nah, the real. best shit. Yeah, the best, the best shit. shit. The best. Everything been worse. Uh, yeah. the right. Best. Right. And, and it ain't even about like I was gonna leave or I was gonna have um I was gonna be sore as far as, as far as my feelings or anything. I was just expressing some of the things that wrong. ran through my head. Right. You know, like but because the other side of that, you know, and I already documented this shit. Um, the other side of that was like, it's an opportunity and it's a reciprocation of my brother letting me be a part of, you know, cause I was going into, in through, I was going in with all of it. I was like, and this nigga gonna name it Originators 99. <laughs> you know, I was going through all of that shit in my head, but it was like an instant. You know how you think like a hundred things mm -hmm. in an instant. And those were one of the things. I'm just laying it out, you know, right. for the sake of, you know, just letting y'all know how it is. I like to set the record straight. And I feel like if you're gonna know me, then then know who I am. Don't know who, don't know me for like just me talking. I'm I'm talking and expressing what actually happened and what I actually felt. And then what I actually did, the actions I took to create whatever um, whatever the, the um, end result was. So, so I thought the other side, if you want to call it that, of like, yo, you know, this is my nigga from a long time. Sandbox. This is my brother. And, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this thing. And he invited me. He, he could have called somebody else. Wow. He could have called somebody Timbaland else. Timberland Beats wasn't cheap back then. Right. Uh -huh. Absolutely not. They're, they're, they're not, they're they're not cheap, cheap now. now. <laughs> but, but back then, the beats yeah. wasn't yeah. quarter million. It wasn't nothing to spend on. Going for a premium. Yeah. So, so, it, so my, in, my, in, my thinking was I was, again, I was gratified that I could be on this joint because, like, it's, it's a. Um, I, I, I feel funny saying shit like that, but it's a classic. It's, it's a classic. classic. That's, that's not funny. I don't feel funny yeah. about that's that. A, that's that song was ahead of no time. Time. Back in the no time. Yo, because I ain't come here for that shit. But see, no, I get it. No, no, that's, that's, that's a fact. Nah, I, I get it. Fact. Bro, I, bro. But that don't mean, that don't mean I can't. You, you think about all the rappers in the world. Right. How many of them have been on a hit record? Oh yeah, nah. You, you're absolutely right. I'm just saying that's how I feel. Like when I your feel ego I, is supposed I, to kick in, you leave it them? at the door. When it's supposed to be at the door, <laughs> you bring the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what we do. What are we doing here? Right, here, here go my ego. So y'all think you're trying to clown me, son? <laughs> Brooklyn nah. niggas, man. I, don't know. <laughs> I got it. <here>, man. <laughs> man, I should have worn some fucking feline. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but nah. Okay, so 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 bring us to the inside of that room. You lay the verse down. Mm -hmm. What's the reaction? Oh, so, um, so I go in, I finish writing, and I go on the booth, and the engineer says he's gonna do a, you know levels check. So. It was like, where I'm gonna come in, come in. You know, obviously, Jazz O finished the shit. Um, so I do the verse. And I was like, um, how are the levels? Y'all ready? And Timberland and Jay and the engineer, they looking in the thing. Timberland goes, come out. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. No ad libs, no It's done. Nah, straight I ain't going to ad libs anyway. Wow. Yeah. 
Bro, That's what makes this shit one classic, take. man. Mm -hmm. One take jazz. <laughs> one take it. jazz. That was it. What did you think right. when you heard that beat, though? Because that beat sonically was ahead of its time. Yeah, I was like, damn. Like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it was different. Just yeah. the, the pro, the, um, you know, with it, with the snare and the kick was hitting. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, not, it's not very easy to do mm -hmm. for some. Uh, not very easy to do because you have to, like, it's so abstract, yet it has to keep you like this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There has to be a, a, a groove. That's why I call it a groove because this, it's, not the, it's not the hit of a drum or an instrument. It's the space, space in, in between. between. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it a groove. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's what you're really doing this to. You know what I'm saying? You're doing it to the groove. And the, the, the drum beat or the spaces in between or the, or the actual attack of whatever instrument, it, it, um, it cancels out the groove to begin uh, over again. Right. And the way the way he formulated that um, that drum program was was nice. Still, I mean, well, he he's sick mm -hmm. with it. Was Emil oh, in the shot session with y'all? Um, or she came later and did her part. Nah, I don't I don't I don't remember being there with, with her being there. I wasn't there with, when she recorded. <laughs> so, so that's crazy. That's classic. Oh, it's classic. That's classic. Shit. I don't like saying it's a classic. It's classic. No, it is. Hey, man. I don't care, I don't care what you say. It's you know me now, so deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you well enough to ignore you when you say shit like that. Okay. All right. I'm, so, that's your prerogative. So I, don't, I don't know if you remember this, but I met you years ago around that time. Um, Just when you had the braids? Nah. I, did I have a braids? Nah, I had a braids. Clark Kent. Introduced me to you up at Rockefeller. Hey. And um, around this time, I think uh, Wise P and Hap, Dark Hat, they from my hood. Rangers. They got signed mm -hmm. to the Carter faculty. Mm -hmm. um, me and you how I was managing them. Right. Oh, you were, oh, yeah. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. Were you supposed, okay, so you were part of the management. I thought you was part of the, the label structure. Um. No, no, okay. no. I mean, I was, but I wasn't. I was like a, a silent part of that, you know. Cause, cause what you understand, what you gotta understand, like when I say I didn't really want to be a part of a lot of shit, I really didn't. My thing was, yo, I make beats, I rhyme, I do a whole bunch of creative shit to create what I feel is the best product. Um, I want money for it. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't have the, because, and, and it, it, it became difficult. I want to say, I don't know if difficult is the right word, but I, I got to say this, like in, in origin, like I never did it. Like I had like a 10 year plan, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be a, uh, have my own record label and all these other things because in all honesty, I didn't care. I know that I got a stomach and I got to eat and I had kids and the kids got to eat. So I do what I do. If that don't work, I do other stuff and, and so on and so forth. Right. But I was never, um, you know, it was more um, Carter faculty. Um, we had, we had a, a management company called Between Friends. And right. I remember that. Yeah. And Rangers. The Rangers was um, signed to us. Whoa. Mm -hmm. All right, so after the success of uh, Jigga What, the originators, were there deals on the table? Um, I heard from a couple of A&R execs that they, they stood back because they were under the impression that that's what was coming next with Rockefeller. Hmm. Mm. You know. Were you looking for? Him? I actually wasn't. I, I mean, crazy as it may sound to a lot of people, I just wasn't. You Why know? not? Um, I felt that Rockefeller was formulated 
to promote, market, and for the success of Jay-Z. And there would be there would be no room for me. It wouldn't be intelligent for me to, you know, to be a label mate in that aspect, you know. Why is that? Because I feel like you needed your own house. Mm, I didn't need it, but if I was to even if it was another a different label, it would be like, okay, there's so there's so so many other people so dissimilar to me that there's my space to, you know, right. my void that I could fill. But with um with a Jay-Z and a jazz at as label mates, it's like if you're a group or you two different artists, it becomes, it could become too similar. That's, that was my thinking. The lanes are too close. Yeah. Okay. I just thought it was too similar. And, and then me just thinking like being non-confrontational because I know that knowing what I, knowing what I knew as far as Rockefeller basically for the upliftment career-wise of Jay-Z. Did you feel that way about the other artists also? Um, Like the label was just geared towards Jay-Z and nobody else mattered? Um, I felt like they mattered as much as Jay-Z wanted them to matter. Hmm. That's, that's just my honest opinion, you know, so. I just didn't want to be in a position where I have to make um, personal decisions on something that I should have paid more attention to business-wise. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Were you managing Bleak when he signed the Rockefeller? Yeah. Did you get that impression from that experience? Um, <coughs> nah. Nah, everything... Everything was everything. We had, um, there were a couple of things on the table for Bleak and um, there were insinuations that they were like, um, they were stamped out in order for Bleak to go with Rockefeller, which I'm sure he is very happy this day for whatever happened. Right. You know, and our our first, our top priority and our intention was for Bleak to sign with Rockefeller. But at first it didn't work out. What do you, you mean? Know, they ain't sign them. <laughs> <laughs> at first they ain't sign them. So um, what happened in between that, I can't tell you because I don't know. Um, we had something on the table with... Um, Hollywood records mm. and somehow that disappeared. They were ready to sign him. I don't know what happened, why it didn't happen, you know, but he ended up with Rockefeller, you know, and I'm, I'm glad for him. He got a gold album, you know, and, you know, mm. and the story. Mm. Take it from here, man. <laughs> I asked everything out. Bro, bro. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How did you guys get to the point where beating on the table, you're, you're coming up with new rhyme patterns, mm -hmm. flying out to London together. He's telling you not to eat the pork. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, 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 you produce... Uh, his first hit at the time. Mm -hmm. He puts you on a, a, a originator produced by Timbaland, one of the biggest producers at that time. Mm -hmm. And to this day, mm -hmm. legendary producer. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You get offered a deal. You said you didn't think it was fair. And right. then you explain 
it might not might might not have been in your best uh, interest to be on the same label as Jay Z. Right, but that was that was the that was not the 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 thing that made it unfair. Um, I was I was just trying to get general points that we would incorporate into an agreement and to be honest with you i don't know whose idea it was but i was talking to dane and he just gave me the impression that i was going to get a shitty deal because why because i asked about accounting and i was like about auditing i asked about okay you want me to go in in the studio and record an album um i do other things i can't do those things and be in the studio you know doing lockouts recording the album so how am I going to be compensated? He didn't have good answers for those questions. So I just, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't hostile. I wasn't angry at anything. I was I ain't doing that shit. You know, that shit is crazy. I must be fucking retarded. But the opportunity was there. Yeah, the opportunity for, for me to um, end up hurting somebody. <laughs> 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 it, that was, it wasn't good. And that's, and that's, you know, that's where I'm coming from with stuff like that. There's a reason why I'm not confrontational. It's because I do, I feel like I, I do what's necessary to avoid the dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, if you don't recognize that you're insulting my intelligence, I do. And so I'll, I'll go back. this way. So, I'll, so you know. we, don't, we don't have to get right. into it. Right. But so how did it come to the point where... You guys are making diss records about about each other. Um. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't do that. I didn't start that. Um. There was something there was something that was said, and I heard about it, and I didn't know if it was true, so I didn't respond to it. So, I just kept I just kept hearing funny shit. What was the funny shit? Funny shit, like negative shit about about me, like what I'm doing or or that um uh oh that that that's <laughs> that's that's kind of what, what set it off really yeah. was that major points were made about certain things that were going on at the time. For one, um I, I was doing a, a compilation called um, uh, Jazz on El Mobilare Presents Kings County. And Jay-Z is featured on a song. Let's go. Let's go, exactly. Yeah. And I contacted him and I asked him if he would, you know, if he would come and make a, you know, cameo appearance. I mean, you on the song. And he didn't show up. So I was like, okay. I mean, life goes on. Did so he I'm, say he was going to show up, though? Yeah, he said he was going to show up. Oh, mm -hmm. that's different. Yeah. So half the time, I'm, I'm doing, doing my parts and shit. I'm looking around at the same time <laughs> like, yo, did he show up yet? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but there was a um, there was a stretch limousine. I don't know who was in it, and it came by there and it stopped for a second, and then it left. And I'm not saying it was him, but I'm not saying that it was not him. Mm -hmm. um, but that in itself, like <clears throat> you know, and and everybody's busy. I get all that, yeah. but I thought. I expected more, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, I expected more. Um, and this shit could be two-sided because I'm I'm a bit of a recluse. You know what I'm saying? Cause, right. Cause there are a lot of occasions he could he could say to me, like, nigga, you just wasn't around. Like, fuck you want me to do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna give you a taste of your own medicine, or I'm not doing any of that. I'm just doing me because you ain't you ain't here right now, or whatever the case. Right. So I, I looked at that and I was like, okay. Um, 
And the thing I was talking about earlier, um, somebody told me that he said something about on, um, I think on 106 and Park about, about me being lazy or something like that. He and said that on 106 and Park? Yeah, and that's that, no. That, I'm that, saying, I'm saying, I'm not saying he said it. Yeah. I'm saying that's what I heard that he had said, and I had to ignore it because if I didn't hear it, and <coughs> mm-hmm. excuse me, they're only like maybe like one other person telling me about it. Like I don't know that, and I don't, I can't even, I couldn't even see that. Mm-hmm. Right. But I can say that. But there were people around you that, was, that get, kept. Instigating and doing the same thing to him, yeah, yeah. So that's what he was saying. It was he a lot of he say she say shit that created that, mm. yeah, yeah. So, um, who this who first? I don't know, I don't even remember. Let me see. Oh, what happened was, um, I did an interview for Source Magazine, and don't look at me. I don't, I don't, Tim, no. No, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> we're, just, we're that, just talking man. about that. But I mean, in, in summation and, and to be short with it, that um, I just mentioned basically kind of the same thing that I mentioned to y'all just now. And um, um, is it okay to mention? Okay. So. Kim Osario, <laughs> I asked. I, I, I asked. That was crazy. Uh, told you not to look at me. Yeah, she said, you know, she she wanted to get a a comment from Jay for the interview. You know, at like the, you know, to the icing on the cake. You know what I'm saying? It's like. It's your, it's your bro jazz, you know what I'm saying? Say something, you know, fiddly diddly dot, anything, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it was to to my best guess that he said, um, just put my name in quotation marks. That was it. That's what, did, what did that mean to you? Um, it meant a couple of things. It, it meant that you had, you, you were later on, I found out more, but at that moment I was like, damn dog. But it's Mm. like, but, but at the same time, you could do that. You could do whatever you choose, but like, yo, tell me, tell me why you did it. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't tell me why, then I'm gonna think that you just you, saying you left fuck to your jazz. own imagination, right? But your imagination is leading you into a negative place. Yeah, e- ego. That could be it. But w- I, what I, did I, you find out later? Um, I didn't find out nothing later. <laughs> you said later on. I had. A, I'm saying later on. I looked at it like it. It could. It could have been politics. It could. Later on, I found out because I saw. I saw shit. I saw. Um, we were somewhere and. Him and Dane was having an argument with, um, well, what's his name, David Mays. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. So, I don't know what it was about. So at the time, they now now, being that Benzino just kind of put a story out there. Well, I'm not I'm not saying it's false. I'm not saying it's true. Mm-hmm. But he put out a story about Jay and Dane having friction with the source, and mm-hmm. there was a this was around the same time, was it? What no, year no, was no. this? Not, to, not Source Awards. Nah, I'm talking was... about when they were up at the office. I think of 02. I, I still think it was Source Awards. I don't know. You think? You don't know. Yeah, All right, know. cool. All I need is I, I don't know. So if this was around the same time, then I can't imagine getting a quote out of them for anything. Source yeah. related. But it, you think what I, I'm saying? I don't, yeah. And, and again, I say I don't, I don't know. I can't speak on... What I do not know, all I know is that, yo, it's your man about to get some light and I'm not getting the support. And you could have told me why. And if you had told me why, and maybe he was just assuming that I already knew. 
It could be a thousand things. Yeah, if he said put my name in the quotes, but what is that? Aren't you partly responsible for his name? Yeah, but what does that mean though? He could have said like, like this is Jazz O. Ja- I wouldn't yeah. be I wouldn't be Jay Z or if there or wasn't Jazz, jazz O. Yeah, but he didn't even have to go that far. He'd have been like, yo, yo, holler at my man's and. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Quotation. So forget, forget saying I'm the biggest rapper in the world and I got my name because of this guy. Don't say that. I don't, I don't ask, I don't ask anybody for whatever they not gonna do. If you ain't gonna do it, you ain't gonna do it. But you didn't ask. She did, correct? Yeah. And then she came back to you and told you and right. Jay fronted. I didn't. Nah, she didn't say Jay front. <laughs> Y'all be careful with your word. All right, she yeah. didn't say. She, she didn't say, say Jay front. Okay, that was that was me instigating the way that she does. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> <okay>. ego. <laughs> what year was that? About uh, 02, I think. Like uh, 02, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is definitely around the time that the source and and Rockefeller were not out of eye. So it may not have had it had anything to do, to with, do you. with me. Right. I get it. But that disc record but still it, came out. But it does. <laughs> and I, I didn't um a lot of that shit happened before I, I even I, I because that was one thing I always said like I would never do. And that shit almost made me cry, like the fact that I had to say negative shit about this nigga here out of all people in the universe that mm-hmm. I had to say shit about this dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that shit hurt me. Um, but but and, none of the negative stuff that you're talking about was, was like direct, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. My my shit was direct. No, your shit was direct. Mm-hmm. But the stuff that you was getting from people, it was oh. nothing that you could say. Jay said this to oh, my face. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and I didn't, and that's why I didn't go on that. I didn't go on that, and um, because you know people love people love that shit. They love beef. They love drama. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that they start calling it beef, I was like, yo, I'm gonna tell y'all like I tell everybody else. Beef is when you got two left in the clip, you behind a thin ass tree and niggas is busting at you. Mm-hmm. That's beef. All this other shit is child's play. Right. You know, mm-hmm. clowning around, talk, 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 talk. Right. But um, I, I just, you know, in all of this, like, I, I, gotta, I gotta compliment y'all first off because y'all got a lot of this stuff from me that I wouldn't even expect to yeah. say on camera. Mm-hmm. And two, it doesn't matter to me because it's the truth. Everybody got to live with it. Whatever I said, whatever comes out of my mouth, I got to live with it. You know, I'm not throwing dirt on anybody. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling how it happened. You know, people can evaluate and I'm sure they never hesitate to evaluate the whole situation to me so many times. Look, man, my nigga, if it wasn't for you, and this, I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's mm-hmm. all well and good. But you don't know my next uh my next move. Mm-hmm. You can't calculate my next move for me because number one, you not me. Number two, you going off for of emotion. And I'm I'm doing my best to go on rational thinking and what's beneficial to me and what is most healthy, you know, if right anything is wrong, then I, you know, and, and, and sometimes people like, it's almost to the point of naivete when you sit there and say like, damn, this happened, that happened, that happened. Like to go back to what you said, you know, as far as it doesn't matter the intention or, or what have you, it's the end result. So you tell me, how, how should I evaluate all of this as far as an end result from regardless of what his intentions or anybody's intentions was in 
our little scenario, if you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Did you really want me to answer that? I asked you. Oh, okay. Um, how would you evaluate the end result? Where do you stand now? Hmm? Two, where, did, where do the two of you stand now? I mean, we more than cordial. More than cordial? Yeah. Okay, so the result's not that bad. The end result's not that bad. Yeah, Could but probably... you asked me a question. You answered my question with a question. I said, well, how do you because... evaluate? Not me. How do you evaluate? Would, because I'm, you I'm, told I'm... me, you, you brought a, up a great point about No, but that's, that's part of my answer. That's part of my answer. As okay. to where you stand now would, would determine where it, where it ended up at. With the end result. Right. That's okay. the end result. So if the end result is that you're more than cordial, mm -hmm. then that's not a bad place to be with somebody that you came up with. But it's not, a, it's not the best place. It's not where we would hope it would be. And when I say we, I don't mean you and him. I mean, outsiders looking in who are fans, mutual fans of you both. Mm -hmm. We would both want you to be super cool. We would both want y'all to be, you know, lockstep like it was again, mm -hmm. making more classic records, palling around. We would, that's what we would dig to see. <clears throat> the mentor and the mentee on equal grounds, breaking bread as, as equals. That would be fire. Mm -hmm. We would love to see that. But... If you're more than cordial, still communicate with each other, it's not bad. Because mm -hmm. some, some miscommunications end way worse than that. And from what I'm hearing, from what you've told us, this all feels like one big-ass miscommunication. Mm -hmm. so, so, again, I got to bring this back. How did the diss record start? <laughs> right, part three, right? <laughs> um, yo, so it's so crazy, like... You you bear, I barely remember. Um, I think the how how I mean the the, the, the how shit. yeah that, that shit because it off. yeah because of the um so you saying they they this oh it was Jita here we go um, now nah. you remember nah, I, I, I remember the record he remembers yes. but who went first he remembers freeway nah. he's no, not the same now he's no. talking about he's talking about who, who started who struck yeah. first oh, who struck okay. first so um. What happened was, um, let me see. Okay, I think Jay was up at Hot 97. And I'm trying to remember whether this was before or after. Um, but he was up at Hot 97 and they were taking calls. And the subject matter had to do with me. And so, so I called and they put me on hold. And what I ended up getting was, um, Angie said, Jay said, holla at him at the studio. And I didn't. Why not? Ego. <laughs> nah, nah, actually, actually wasn't. It was just the fact that you got, you got the, the, um, you on the airwaves and you're saying stuff about me. What was he saying? I can't even remember, but it wasn't good. <laughs> saying stuff about me and I can't rebut because what Angie Martinez said was that we taking callers. If I call, then I think I satisfy <laughs> the, the criteria. The criteria of being a caller. And um they didn't let me talk because I was calling to defend myself. Like, look, this is not true, and I got proof for this. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um but I know maybe I chose to forget some of that shit, but I know that's what kind of set it off. You know, I can't, I can't speak. And I felt like that's when they weren't playing fair. It's like, oh, he's up here and he could say this and say that. And then- But what was said? You don't remember. You don't remember. I don't remember. I really I could, don't. I could, I could. I'll probably remember tonight sometime. <laughs> 
after I leave here, he's like, yo. But I, I don't remember because I was so, I was more um, absorbed, if you will. I was more absorbed in the fact that that this nigga saying anything about me based on illegitimate whatever, you know, shit that hearsay, you might as well say. Right, so, but, but, it, but this is the same year that um that you you got the source article and and you were here with the quote of just put my name in quotations. Mm-hmm. Or put my name in a quote. Mm-hmm. Same year. To so, my recollection, so was, yeah. This was kind of brewing. Be mm -hmm. Between the two of y'all, yeah, through outside forces, not just outside forces, because at the end of the day, it takes two to tango. The circumstances could be vary, you know, it could vary in circumstances. Um, you know, there's some people who say like, "Oh, you shouldn't bring that up." Mm -hmm. There's some people who say that, "Yeah, bring it up," you know, bring that fire, or whatever the fuck. <clears throat> But well, my thing is that these things happen. You know, um, I don't want people having any question of my integrity. I don't want them having any, so I gotta speak. You know, I can't, I can't go on with the acquiescence and not saying anything. But I, I made a promise to myself, like to be fair. I'm not gonna throw dirt on anybody that they didn't throw on themselves. Um, I'm not saying that Everything I do is perfect and right. I'm not saying that everything he did was perfect and right. You know, and there could, there could be a lot of people say, well, you know, there's a couple of billion that say that everything he did was right, mm -hmm. right. you know, but um, that's, in, that's in that world. And as odd as it may seem, I'm not in that world. You know, my music could be in there and part of my spirit due to the music, because I put I put that into the music, but I'm as a person, I'm not in that world. Cause I don't really I don't really care. Well after the shot started flying and you dropped about two clips. Mm -hmm. the Rockefeller camp, they fired back. Did you find it funny that he never himself jumped on a record to diss you? Yeah, that was that was his way of. I don't know. You gotta ask him on now. <laughs> Wait, would you but say never jumped on a record? He, he never. Song? He never actually dissed never Jazzo, Jazzo back on a record. Right. He actually was shouting them out on the diss record. Jazzo, Jazzo. His new album is out. It's currently playing. He was like, he wasn't dissing. Them. Yeah, but right. what about the Black album? Yeah, he didn't diss him on that 4th. either. Yes, he did. Did he? Yes. On, What's the, the, line? on December fourth. What's the line? He said, uh, supposedly, no one, nobody paid jazz swag ass. I'm getting ahead of myself, by the way, I could rap. What did he say after that? That comes second to me moving his crack. Crack, yeah, that went Give off the Give me a topic. second, I swear, I would say about my rap career, the 96 came, niggas, I'm here, goodbye. goodbye. But mm -hmm. the way I took that line, <clears throat> was it, mm -hmm. it was an innuendo of a diss, but I took it more like Jay was struggling. He was struggling at the time with listening to all the people around him saying shit mm -hmm. and struggling with the fact of having some type of loyalty to Jazz or being that he's somebody that groomed him. You know what I'm saying? That's why I think he said that line after that I'm getting ahead of myself. Like, I shouldn't be saying shit like this. Right. I should just call a nigga and be like, yo, we need to talk and quell why, this why shit. Why didn't that ever happen? And we now. have my last question. <laughs> but that was it? <laughs> Pretty much. Well, second to last. There was a rumor floating around that Jay came and got you and signed you to Rock Nation. You heard about that rumor? Mm, nah, I didn't hear. I mean, I heard it from you. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, I, what what happened was um, there was uh, there was somebody in Chicago I was working with, and um. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make his day with this one. Um, 
His name is Tony Jordan. And he nudged and nudged and nudged. He got in touch with Emery to because his his mission was to bring me and Jay in the same spot and let us, you know, let, let us out. talk. Have a powwow. Powwow, yeah, yeah, what have you. And um, so he did it. He he got in touch with Emery. Um they were um doing the um uh, what tour was that? Can't remember the name of the tour, but Made in America? Nah, it was before that. Um, American gangster. Was it? A black. Nah. Um. Yeah, y'all probably gonna have to edit some of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah, so it was. I, the year was twenty. I think it was 2017, 2017, and um, he had us. He had us meet. So, so Tony said, "We got, um, we got three passes at Will Call." Said Emery. Emery said he wants you to come out to the show, um, United Center. So, so we went. And everything was everything. We ain't really talk about shit. We talk about regular, you know, cool shit. What's up? What you been done? What you been up to? You know, I ain't have to ask him that. You know, shit is all over <laughs> everything. Uh-huh. And um, you know, to some people, I'm like a ghost. But um, that was that was it. Like nothing. There was nothing like, oh, we got to sit down and discuss this and all of that. Because at the end of the day, after everything I told y'all, I told you that. But where I stand today is like, this shit ain't really matter. It only matters. It's just like something happened, like something traumatic happened. And then like 10 minutes later, I'm like, damn, why was I trip off? Yeah. Not even a big deal. Right. You know, so it's the same thing. And when you saw each other, what was the, the greeting like? Like like I just saw the nigga last week, you know. Big hugs. Handshake, handshake and hug, not no, you know, crazy embracing type of dumb shit. You know. <laughs> um, you know, just regular You're shit. Not that type of <laughs> like like yeah, like I saw a nigga last week or something. Right. And and that's how that's how it um that's how I should have been. And then, you know, he just he just looked at me, he's like, yo, man. And he did like this. And I was like, nah, I feel you. It's like, so it was really nothing to talk about because, you know, people want to hear everything I said, but at the end of the day, man, it is what it is, man. Like, you know, that that's I see him not as a little brother, but as a younger brother. And I love him. You know, I think that regardless of whatever situation, I don't think that, I don't see us being the same, like what you were talking about. I don't see us being that way because people people grow in different directions. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that's just a part of life. And, and, and who knows, just because the relationship is different doesn't mean that it's less of or not equal to. Right. You know, that same type of relationship. And it's just about growth. And I think that, I think that, you know, I think that I'm talking about this shit too much, man. Shit ain't nothing. <laughs> I don't even give a fuck, man. Like, me and the niggas cool. And at the end of the day, that's that's mostly it. Right. It was a 444 tour, by the way. That's what tour it was. That's it was? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure it was. Oh wow! It's easy huh. for me to say that now, right? Like, the oh, irony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the irony. The mm-hmm. irony. And then, um, then we communicated, and um, everybody was going crazy because they they had aspirations, like a lot of people, you know, like all oh, these niggas gonna do originator, you know, part three, or you know. The, trimester or whatever you know what i'm saying so, so we so you know 
we we I ran into him. I ain't running to him. I, I um communicated with him. I told him I was doing some business in Detroit, and it turned out that um I think it was the on the run tour was in uh, Detroit. I don't know if I think it was on the run too, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And um so I, I ran some out there and he left some shit at Will Call and uh, we were we were on the floor. And it it was good, you know. It was good. Like and I, I feel like I gotta say this, you know. Um some people be like, oh jazz, you just shouldn't have said anything at all, you know, because they worried about their imaginary relationship with the with dude, you know. Me, like, I I don't talk that much. So when I talk, I feel like I have a responsibility to to tell it like it is. Right. You know. There, you know, there are a lot of people that I know that, you know, they, for whatever reason, you know, they want me to say, oh, the nigga, you know, he did this and, you know, he's a piece of shit or all yeah. this type of other things. And that's fine. That's fine. But you can't evaluate two people's dealings with your dealings. Hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I know killers. They ain't never killed me. <laughs> Fuck, I'm supposed to. <laughs> right. I'm gonna judge them. I, you know, right. I'm, I can't. I can't do it because if they treat me with love and respect, I can't. I don't. It doesn't mean I condone what they do. Right. But at the same time, I'm like, y'all gotta respect the fact that they come to me that way. And whatever they do, whether they do it for money or they just angry or whatever the fuck, then that's what they do. You know what I'm saying? Um, we know a lot of people that do a lot of different shit. And, and I'm not saying, I'm not putting him in that category. I'm just saying relationships, they're different. Everybody has different, you know, denominators. Right. So that's, that's where it is. I can't believe I said all the shit I said, but I said it, I probably needed to say it, mm -hmm. you know, to get it out of my system and, um, you know, I, I feel like out of everything, I feel like I was fair. You know, I didn't I don't kick people in the dirt. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't say nothing that, you know, because sometimes you could you could tell the truth and then like be dragging somebody through the mud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't think I did that. And um, that's where I leave it. You know? I and, think it's important for all of us to. Um, to keep record or have examples of relationships and you know the ups and downs that, that they can go through when involving the music industry or success or distance or whatever it is mm -hmm. someone's gonna hear this conversation and there's a possibility they may make a better decision or they may understand the decision right you dig what I'm saying exactly so I thank you for that no problem. No problem. What's next for jazz? Oh man, I have um, a seven book series that I actually call the um, format of the books um, a biotext, you know, because it contains like um, biographical material, you know, about my life in different periods, along with as a text, it's. Um, um, lessons on and examples of creative writing and it um it focuses on poetic devices you know like automatopias uh simile metaphor so on and so forth right. mm. and so um each each volume has um is based on a, a verse like a, a game-changing verse in hip-hop so you know i have to use nigga what nigga who for the first one mm -hmm. And what I do is I break the verse down so that people understand where these different poetic devices were used. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that That's people fire. would learn. So for the people who don't know, they would learn that it's just not the mundane aspect of 
the lyrics that um that entertain but it's if you have the insight and the knowledge of poetic devices that you be like oh shit i was a double entendre you know what i'm saying right. shit like that so it has that and i'm gonna do seven of them they don't all have to be my verses and um but that's the first one and also in it i put like a um i i list i list um 26 um major poetic devices that are used along with their definitions and then i'm going to code the lines or phrases in the verse so that they can say oh that's such and such oh that's this and um um i'm doing i'm doing that uh the name the title is to be announced because i keep changing shit as i evolve <laughs> and complete the first volume right um i look forward to that yeah Good thanks word. i i I'm gonna keep my mouth shut, but yeah, I look forward to it. God damn. <laughs> I look forward to it. I don't know what that was. But no, we're gonna talk off camera. We're gonna oh, talk off okay. Camera, but yeah. Okay. So yeah, and and the main thing is like, I feel like we we got to stand up for ourselves because it must be known that we don't write this creative shit by accident. Mm. So I'm gonna put in in the world's face and put it on notice for the people who don't understand that. That like, look. This is what we know this. We know these poetic devices. We understand the structure and so on and so forth. So, so that we so that we can not so that we could be recognized, hey, look at us, but right. so that they mm -hmm. can recognize that we recognize them, you know, and that we understand like for the for the people who put us in these um capsulated, you know, corners. Yeah that you know this is this is what it is and it's, for and, and masterful work right and and more so and more importantly most importantly i should say is for the the enlightenment of the reader regardless of whether we putting them on notice or we educating them i don't like using the word education because that's like a form of programming but y'all get what i'm saying right the learning <clears throat> so yeah jazz right. Right. Anytime you want to come back and break down a verse with us, come through. Oh, no doubt. We're here. No doubt. Thanks. Salute. A nigga used to have no chill. Nowadays, I bump side day. Traffic on bumper to bumper, stuck on the highway. Take so long to get from Monday to Friday. Then you wake up on Sunday like it was just Friday. Cry pays an iron cage, check to find ways. I wasn't trying to slave a nine to five till my dying days. Frank Sinatra, I gotta do it my way.